Good afternoon, Doc. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. This is the ninth e kapihan of the Philippine Franchise Association. Today is another beautiful day, and this is the ninth, and uh, this is the last in the first season of the e kapihan of the Philippine Franchise Association. Because as you may already know, it the virtual uh, conference of the Philippine Franchise Association will happen very soon. It will be announced shortly. This is Dr. Carl Balita and I'll be your moderator today in this final episode of the final episode of the first season of the Ikapihan of the Philippine Franchise Association and I'll be joined in today by the beautiful the president of the PFA Ms. Cheryl Ramos Quintana. Hi Cheryl, good afternoon. Good afternoon Dr. Carl. Good afternoon to our panelists and our viewers. We're very excited. This is our uh, last episode for the season one, sabi mo nga. Time flies. We started this as the ECQ started in March. And uh, how we went through together no, uh, as, as an association to reach out to more entrepreneurs, Filipino entrepreneurs, to survive this crisis. Of course, very I would excited. still... I would still remember, partner, when we talked about the first. You were not yet a moderator. Uh, you were even a panelist at that time. Yes, but I, I <laughs> yeah. Uh, and thanks very much to the PFA, especially to the, you know, to the executive producer of this program, and Mr. Chris Lim. Thank you for, you know, trusting uh, Carl Balita to handle this. Even my company to have hosted this uh, nine Ika Pihans all together. Yeah, partner. How yes. are you? How is Laguna now? How are you from? The Laguna province. Yes, I'm. Yes, I'm enjoying my coffee now, ah, which I will here. show later. Uh, Carl, I'd same like here. to. Mm. I'd like to extend our uh, gratefulness in behalf of the board of trustees, uh, Chris and I, and Rich, of course, the team that compose the Ikapihan team and the PFA Learning Academy. As we wanted to share more, as we wanted to reach out to our members and the Filipino entrepreneurs in general. So thank you, Carl. Thank you for doing this with us. Yeah, basa para sa ikauunlad ng Filipino entrepreneurs and uh, you know the business. And dito lang naman tayo. And uh, actually, I have to tell you, partner, that I have refused engagements in other in other areas because I just want to be focusing on a few like the UST Alumni Asso Association which I'm also moderating and, and hosting and other few engagements and of course especially the Philippine Franchise Association. Salamat sa tiwala. That's what I have to say. All right. Thank you. And, and partner, let's start the day with a prayer and of course you're of course. assigned to lead us in this beautiful afternoon through a prayer. Of course. My pleasure, Carl. Um, let us put ourselves in the spirit and the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this opportunity to once again gather this afternoon for another fruitful e-learning session. May you grant our speakers, panelists, and Dr. Carl and I the wisdom that we may impart valuable insights and knowledge about the topic. As we continue to adapt to the new normal, we ask for your guidance that we may see the silver lining in this pandemic. Give us strength that we may overcome the challenges that we are facing and to accept the constant changes that we are experiencing right now. We commit our businesses, our health, and our well-being to you, Lord. Grant us prosperity and success. We also pray for our leaders that they may make the best decisions for our nation. Father, we ask for your mercy that we may survive in these trying times. Grant us the resiliency and faith in you, O God. All this we pray in your holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you for leading us in that beautiful prayer. Partner, parang ang ganda ng uh, smile mo today. You, you look so fresh. Hindi uh, <laughs> <laughs> halata na marami tayong ano, no? It's National MSME Week now, Doc Carl, as uh, yeah. we're celebrating that. So it's really a uh, very jam-packed 
uh, week for all of us. Yeah. Especially for the new bestseller. Congratulations, <laughs> partner, for this You're book. You're the best ambassador yeah. talaga. Thank you, Doc Carl. That's my new book. It's out yeah, thank, right now. Thank you, you for writing online. this. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, the Filipino brand can. Thank you yes. so much for making this partner. Because, you know, it makes me feel good as a Filipino reading this. You know, uh, nakaka-proud lang na basahin yung istorya nila bench. No, nila yung, yung mang, paborito natin, dried mango and karimadon, etc. Salamat. Thank you for giving the Philippines this book and for making us so proud, not only of you uh, being one of that Filipino brand as well, but uh, uh, thankful and proud of the brands that made it there in the global platform. Thank you so much. And congratulations ha, sa iyong uh, mga launch. And I think the book is already yes. a bestseller by now. Sold out na yata. Meron pa ba? Virtual launches. Um, I'm very grateful. I did not expect that people will welcome it as uh, they welcome it two weeks ago. So many um, bulk orders, Doc Carl. So, hindi ko ina-expect, pero sobrang masaya. Thank you. Congrats. Yes. One of the brands here is uh, our of chairman. Of course. Uh, Food Asia, Bibing Kinitan is also here. And uh, the intention really is for of all course. of us to get inspired. Uh, these are very humble founders of the brand. I was able to get the privilege mm. of interviewing them. So more than more than the book, actually, All it's right. the one-on-one. -on -one. I uh, love it. Love the experience. Mm. Thank Salam. you. All right. Congratulations, partner. And to welcome us all. Okay. And uh, of course, we want to be inspired by his presence and by his words. May we call on the chairman of the Philippine Franchise Association and uh, the president of Food Asia Group, uh, Mr. Richard Sanz, for these opening remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, uh, Doc Carl. Good afternoon, uh, Cheryl, President Cheryl. And to everyone uh, who is uh, uh, on tune, our last episode of the ECAP had. So first of all, uh, I would like to share, uh, congratulate our president Cheryl for the group uh, for the book. Uh, thank you also for featuring Nitan and all other uh, global Filipino companies. Uh, again, it's very timely and uh, uh, inspiring, no? Uh, so thank you. And uh, of course, kung may napapansin ba kayo, hindi ba mo kung uh, don't you notice na medyo glowing ako? I think I'm glowing. First time to use this. Uh, it's uh, from Isa, Glutamax. Uh, when I woke up, I used this. So, uh, I hope that I'm nasisilaw kayo sa, sa pag-glow ng Glutamax. So, on behalf of the PFA Board of Trustees and Officer, I would like to Welcome everyone again to this ninth and final episode of the Ikapihan. And I hope everyone is in good health and safe as we continue to adapt to the disruptions in the time of uh, the pandemic. As we know, uh, medyo tumataas na raman yung cases. So everyone is uh, a bit edgy, uh, a bit uh, uh, hesitant to go out and it, it's another challenge uh, for us. No, So... Uh, I hope that um, we will be able to wear this uh, new uh, storm uh, stage in the pandemic uh, because of this. And um, the government can also um, uh, make uh, the ch changes needed for the situation to get better for uh, all of us. No? So as we are coping from the change, we must continue continuously try new ways on how to design our businesses in such a way that our customers feel safe and confident in our establishment. So this afternoon, we would hear how these companies have redesigned the shopping and service experience of their customers. We are fortunate to have with us uh, uh, the president of Genil Tupas. Uh, Genil, thank you so much for uh, as you know, we wrote a letter to the malls and uh, you have responded uh, with a very generous support. So thank you so much for this. Uh, it is very, very appreciated at this time and 
I guess uh, we really need to help each other. That's the only way to uh, survive this crisis. Uh, and I, I'm hoping and I'm sure that we will be able to weather and come out stronger uh, if we help each other. But again, thank you so much. We'll have uh, Mr. Charlton of David Salon, uh, Mr. PJ De Guzman of Comon Philippines, and uh, uh, the sponsor of my Glutamac, Ms. Sheila Nazal of ESA Skin and Body Experts, to share on how they have redesigned the service experience. So, if you will remember when we started last March 25, our priority was to have a venue where franchisors, franchisees, and entrepreneurs could gather and share their experiences and learn how to navigate through the COVID-19 crisis. And as we continue to go through these uh, trying times together, our sessions have evolved to feature topics that would help businesses pivot and adapt to the unforeseen challenges that this crisis has thrown to us. Indeed, we have come a long way since our first ECAPIAN session. And on this note, uh, I would like to take this opportunity uh, as we end the first season of the ECAPIAN series to thank our faithful viewers who joined us uh, in all our ECAPIAN sessions. So not only via Zoom, but also those who joined us via Facebook Live. The time has come for us to end the season, but uh, this is not goodbye. We just need to shift our resources as we prepare for PFA's first virtual conference this September. And I promise you, it's really going to be uh, a whole new world of uh, learning. Uh, we have invited a lot of uh, world-class speakers, and it's going to be a game changer. And we hope to see you there. So... I hope that you will continue to accompany us in this journey towards the virtual conference until the season, second season of the PFA Ikapihan. So, uh, of course, this uh, would have not been possible without the support of all our partners led by PPI and PLDT. Enterprise. So our sincerest gratitude also to our members and their franchisee who formed the bulk of our viewers, which number actively in the tens of thousands. So, of course, I would like to thank uh, my sincerest gratitude uh, to our excellent moderators, uh, Dr. Carl Balita uh, and our PFA president, uh, Cheryl Quintana. And of course, our PFA Kapihan were made possible because of the people behind us. You don't see them. But quietly, they are behind the scenes, uh, led by Chris Lim, the executive producer who charted the course of the ECAPN series. And lastly, uh, nakalagay dito sa, ano ko, let us give a warm round of applause. But uh, since uh, we are uh, on mute, can I just, uh, let, can we do this as our warm of, round of applause to the PFA Secretariat, led by Ms. Chief Estrada. So, thank you, thank you. So, also thank you for Bose Coffee, uh, for sending uh, a delicious coffee, uh, iced coffee there. They are sponsors today. So, with this, I welcome you all again to the ninth Ikapihan, and I'm sure that we will all have an exciting and valuable afternoon full of learnings and useful insights. Mabuhay po, mabuhay ang Pilipinas. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rich. Redesigning the shopping and service experience, that's what we're here for today. And surely, just like the past eight copy hands, it, this is going to be learning field. Mamaya namin ipapakilala kung sino yung ating mga uh, speakers and uh, reactors and panelists. And of course, you will be part of this conversation. By the way, if you have any questions, any question to ask, please use the Q&A button. Uh, but if you have any social message to send us, you may directly chat us using the chat button. And uh, yeah, and we would like to look back because this is the final episode of uh, of a series of nine uh, Ika Pihans. Yes. Uh, we would like to look back, partner. And uh, of course, we. Tayo. Yes. Balik we tanaw with numbers. This. Yeah, it started when you will not forget March twenty-five. March twenty-five. 
Oh, navigating is... through COVID disruptions at that time. Thank you so much to uh, Jerome Garcia of the KPMG Philippines, the Minute Burger and Faron Cafe, and of course to you, partner, for being a uh, part of the panel for this one. Yes. All right. Uh, next is ito. Ito yung talagang malaking malake partner. Navigating COVID, your favorite. Yes, Na navigating the COVID-19 crisis, the MSME experience. We had Secretary Ramon Lopez, uh, our DTI Secretary, on giving us updates on IATF and DTI's policies and efforts. Because at that time, partner, no, everyone was clueless what's, uh, what, what's happening and, uh, you know, every, every day is changing in terms of policy. So we were very fortunate to have him. We also had a... Uh, top top notch speakers, panelists at the time. We had Joey Garcia of Contis and Wendy's. We had Dave of uh, IC Big Mac and uh, Cheryl of Mr. Donut and of course Mr. Quicky, uh, Sharon, and also we had our uh, partner, uh, PFA partner, BPI, Eric. We're very grateful for them. And this is the session that made me a fan of Joey Garcia. In fact, after this session, oh, yeah. <laughs> my show, uh, my my guest in my show in ABS-CBN, and of course, the third came uh, last uh, April 15. That's five days after my birthday, and then we talked already about resilient enterprise. We were defining then, now, next, and beyond. And yes. thank you to the SGV and company for giving us a very evidence-based, uh, you know. Uh, information and data regarding to the uh, resilience of the enterprise together with the CEO, CEO uh, of Sea Oil Philippines and uh, the FINMA, the Microtel Group, and the famous Belgian Waffle. All right. Yes. And the fourth partner? Yes, our fourth Ikapihan. As you can see, partner. Our viewers are, and registered participants actually jumped from uh, almost tenfolds no? from the first airing that we had. And this is just the fourth ikapihan. We were discussing the new normal, what's next for brands, businesses, and franchising. And uh, we had Joffrey Lim, who was based in Shanghai, China, uh, giving, us, uh, giving us this uh, resource as a, as a resource speaker for the new normal, what's next for our brands, businesses, and franchising. Of course, we had Dr. Alan Escalona and Victor uh, of uh, Pure Nectar and Fruit Magic. We had uh, Victor Paterno of 7-Eleven, uh, pre President and CEO of 7-Eleven, and Kenneth Yang of McDonald's. Ano to, partner, all board of trustees ng uh, PFA. The heavyweights, the heavyweights of franchising. Yes. And you can imagine we had uh, reached almost 30,000 people at the time in Facebook and uh, almost 6,000 registered participants. And the fifth partner uh, featured, of course, the father of Philippine franchising, who then uh, presented to us his journey towards uh, what he calls the golden age or golden uh, years of franchising, which he predicted to be in 2011 to 2015. And he did it for the first time after he survived COVID himself, Mr. Sami Lim, together with uh, other big heavyweights of Correct. the industry we yeah, had you can see naman in the in the yeah. poster yeah uh, we had the uh, richard sans of Ibinkinita and the max group potato corner of course fred moreno and uh, we had uh, a person from phoenix all right and uh, our sixth just to look back in history a uh, shaping revenue minimizing cost and we had um our consultant from jll boss coffee thank you very much bo Akala ni Rich, siya lang ang may coffee. Hindi niya alam, meron tayo lahat. Oh, I wish everybody's taking their coffee. <laughs> and partner, uh, uh, blooming tayo because we probably used this this morning. I got it yesterday. And the soap and the glutathione. Thank yes. you very much to, to Isa. Uh, we also had Sunny's concept. David Salon also partner. All right, of course. And the chat time of uh, John Lukawa on our sixth. And oh, patapos na tayo sa looking back, journey to, through the past, the seventh, of course pivoting towards recovery because this came up, uh, as a very popular concept, the pivot. We had the Tony Cabrera of the PwC Philippines together with a business that did not suffer much uh, in, in this recessive time because uh, Toby Claudio had Toby Sports uh, navigated 
and uh, they become even uh, bigger uh, during the time of crisis. And Nielsen Philippines, uh, we have John Patrick Kua, and from uh, from Thailand, okay, Swad so Pong of uh, the Potato Corner franchisee in Thailand. And partner, the eighth. Yes, so our eighth e copyhan. This was the last time. This is actually uh, part one of our uh, episode today, partner, because we also discuss the food and dining experience, redesigning it. And uh, so, hiwala yung ating uh, food uh, sector last uh, episode. And we had, of course, architect June Palafox. We're very happy that uh, he graced us and uh, shared to us about this topic. We also had Fior Gelato, Richie Kuna. Of course, Eric D. of uh, Foodie Global Concepts and V. Gregorio of uh, Shakey's Pizza Ventures Incorporated. All right, really, looking back is such a great uh, experience, but today is another uh, Ika Piha and History. We will have Miss, uh, ikaw na magpakilala muna ng lahat because later on you will have the privilege to introduce them one by one, partner. Correct. We will have. Correct, partner. For our uh, ninth uh, PFA Ika Piha, and of course, this is the part two of our uh, customer experience in terms of shopping and service redesigning the shopping and service experience. Of course, we're very grateful. We have the president of Ayala Land Malls, uh, whom I will introduce later. And uh, we also, uh, that's uh, Miss Yang Tupas. Of course, we have David Charlton, the founder and CEO of David Salon, our favorite. We have uh, JP de Guzman of Kumon Philippines. And of course, our good friend, Sheila Nazal of Isa Skin and Body Experts. Partner. All, right. All right. And before we proceed to the program proper, allow me to congratulate the Philippine Franchise Association. I computed the total number of uh, individuals who registered in our event. It reached almost 22,000. It's 21,999 to be exact. Uh, that, that, by the way, this excludes today's uh, registered participants and uh, you know, um, also our audience. We had 8,000 Zoom audience until the 8th. We have uh, we had uh, Facebook live views of fifty four thousand five hundred sixty, and our Facebook uh, Facebook reach one hundred sixty nine thousand six hundred eighty five participants. So congratulations to the PFA for such a remarkable, uh, you know, uh, achievement in making sure that our entrepreneurs learn and our, uh, you know, our MSMEs are navigating well in these COVID times. All right, and. Partner, shall we start introducing our yes, main discussion for this afternoon? Maybe we can. Done here. Yeah, this is uh, redesigning the shopping and service experience. Okay, and um, when we speak of shopping, of course, we'll speak about the malls. And we're lucky to have one, uh, one important lady. Uh, who will present to us the mall experience. Yes, partner? All right. Okay, let, let me do that for, for my partners probably having a, a difficult time connecting because, you know, it's kind of cloudy and even in my location, forgive us if we will be out uh, in connection for a while, okay? Uh, that happens when it rains and weather is not good or you just move. All right, let me proceed to our main speaker for this afternoon. Um, we are honored and fortunate to have with us our resource speaker who is an alumna of the University of the Philippines, Diliman, where she graduated top seven of graduating class of 1994 with a degree in BS Statistics. Wow, so left brain lady, number seven of her batch. She finished her MBA at the University of Chicago, Booth School of Business, and was awarded 2019 Best and Brightest 100 Executive MBAs of Poet and Quants of Executives. Our speaker has 23 years of service with Ayala Land Incorporated. She worked for 21 years with the residential business group of Ayala Land. During this period, one of the highlights of her career is when she joined Alveo in 2007 as the head of project development group, then got promoted as COO in 2016. 
then became the president in 2017. The following year, in 2018, she moved to the commercial business group of the Ayala Land, where she was appointed as president of the Ayala Malls group. Ladies and gentlemen, let's now give our warmest virtual clap and welcome our speaker, Ms. Janil Tupaz. Thank you, Dr. Carl, for the very, very kind uh, introduction. Um, I'd like to say good afternoon to everyone, uh, to the members of the PFA and to our general audience. So Chairman Richard, thank you for the appreciation. It's our pleasure in Ayala Malls to help our merchants as much as we can in the spirit of mutual support. So I'd like to congratulate PFA on the success of this very insightful and helpful ECAPN series. And thank you for inviting me today uh, in your season ender uh, webinar about redesigning the shopping and service experience. So it's an opportunity for us to share with you what we're doing in Ayala Malls. And so I hope that the next few slides would be helpful and would lend to a rich conversation with you during the panel discussion. So we operate 32 malls nationwide. Most of our malls are in Metro Manila, driving most of our business. We are in Angeles and uh, Subic in the north and Laguna, Cavite and Legazpi in the south. We're in Cebu, Bacolod and Iloilo in the Visayas and Davao and Cagayan de Oro uh, and in Mindanao. And what you see on the screen are the quarantine status of the malls in these respective areas. We house over 9,600 stores and about 70% are micro small and medium enterprises or MSMEs. So this is the coverage uh, of Ayala Malls. So as we move on to the body of the presentation, let me first share with you our operating strategy as we navigate the challenges of today in Ayala Land and in Ayala Malls. So this is anchored by the five point action plan set forth by our mother company, Ayala Land, as a framework for directing and integrating all our decisions and efforts during this time, while keeping an evolving eye towards the future as we deal with the fluidity of the times. No? And, and these five points are financial st sustainability, how we can uh, uh, help keep ourselves afloat, caring for our people, so this has to do with uh, how we take care of our organization. Number three, serving our customers, and uh, in the Ayala Mall's point of view, this would be our merchants and our shoppers. Fourth is helping others. How do we help uh, the community at large? And five is thinking ahead towards recovery. So based on this action plan, we identified our key priorities in Ayala Malls. First and foremost, of course, is protection. How do we ensure health and safety in the malls? It's such a public social space. And so the challenge here is how do we control the risk so that we can keep the ecosystem going? We're building customer trust and confidence so that we can drive traffic and address fear. The next important priority are our merchants. We know how difficult the struggle is. Uh, many aspects of the business have been uh, crippled. So how do we help ease the burden? What sort of support can we provide? The third is about transformation in the digital sense. So how do we evolve the business given new behaviors that were quickly developed, especially on the digital front, as people cocoon in their homes and continue to consume? So how do we participate in this space? Um, Priorities one and five are really internally oriented, but I'd like to give you a glimpse of how we move in the organization and as an organization. We're not perfect. We continue to refine and improve uh, on how we do things. And we're very inexperienced dealing with this unprecedented and extraordinary pandemic that we're facing today. But we try to keep going in the best way we can so we can continue to serve. So let me go to our first priority. So this is uh, health and safety. And again, it's all about uh, protection and customer trust. So we've rolled out and enforced our health and safety protocols in Ayala Malls, and we're very grateful for the discipline and cooperation demonstrated by uh, our merchants and shoppers on this end. So it's that health and safety is everyone's concern, and it's something that's taken very seriously. So notable installations that we implemented are the intelligent airport type thermal scanners by the main entrances of the malls. And these scanners measure temperature with 99.9% .9 accuracy. So they also help us improve our security with 67% predictive facial recognition and also help us build our traffic database for analytics. We've also installed UV care devices to disinfect escalator handrails. So more detail to your left, um, with respect to how we comply with government guidelines. So we impose a no mask, no entry policy. Individuals with a temperature of 37 and a half degrees Celsius uh, will have to be sent home and not allowed to enter the mall. We've turned off the Wi-Fi for now for government directive. Uh, lingering is also not allowed. 
So the aircon temperature has been set to 26 degrees. Um, only people between the ages of 21 and 59 are allowed. So we still miss the youth uh, today and the elderly. We enforce a one meter physical distance uh, uh, in uh, circulation. And we have floor markers as well no, to, mark, uh, to guide the direction. Hand sanitizers all over the place. We comply with the limited dine-in capacity and the limited uh, workforce capacity. And lastly, uh, health declaration forms are collected. And we're quite happy that many merchants have resorted to the contactless and convenient QR code way of accomplishing the HDFs. So we encourage everyone to fill this in honestly and completely for our safety and especially for contact tracing. The next uh, key priority is merchant support. Uh, very relevant in today's talk. Of course, it's important for us that we get our merchants back on their feet. So there's no better time uh, than today to hold hands as we jointly and collectively support each other so we can survive the challenge together. And I'd like to highlight three forms of support that we have offered. So during ECQ, we announced uh, that we will not charge rent for merchants that were restricted from operating. I think we were the first to announce this. And we continue to do this today. For those that operate, we have uh, waived the minimum guaranteed rent and uh, reduced the common charges and collect only a straight percentage for any sale that's made. I think at the end of May, across the Ali system, we have condoned about 4 billion pesos in rent in support of our merchants. So another support that we provide is the tie-up with banks, uh, in particular with BPI and Land Bank. And we'll try to see how we can add more banks here. No? And this is uh, to provide a loan facility to help merchants, especially the MSMEs, source funds to address working capital requirements. We roll this out uh, late June, early July. And as of today, I think we have about 38 inquiries. So we hope this facility will be useful to many more merchants. And if you're interested, uh, you may get in touch with Land Bank and BPI through the contact details uh, flashed on the screen or ask about this loan facility from our operations team. So last but not least, under merchant support, we make use of our open spaces and activity centers in the malls to augment uh, the dining capacity. So usually we design an Ayala Mall such that about 20% of our land area is allocated to open space. So we're glad to have this as part of our DNA because they proved to be very helpful today, no? especially in providing naturally ventilated areas where people can eat and rest. You will find what we call stop by areas in the mall. So ito yung mga, may mga sinatap kaming mga upuan at lamesta. Uh, and this provides convenient uh, seating uh, for takeout food. And for merchants in hard to reach areas, we also encourage satellite selling, which means that uh, they can set up uh, in open areas and in zones where traffic is higher. So you can have a booth there or a kiosk. We also hold thematic events such as an electronics fair, a garden fair. And coming up this August is the farm to market program to help merchants as well as farmers uh, and, and drive traffic to the mall. So the third priority as we know, the lockdown has led uh, to an accelerated adoption of various digital platforms. This digital shift enabled the consumption of goods uh, and entertainment through online means as physical mall visits became limited. And so e-commerce flourished with a much bigger uh, active audience. With the advent of Click and Mortar, we sought to participate by launching our digital initiatives to connect our shoppers and merchants online and offline. We launched Drive-By, so this is a convenient curbside pickup facility that promotes contactless payment and convenience. All you need to do is call the store and then pick it up from the station, from the drive-by station uh, in the mall. Uh, we rolled out Zing, so this is our Ayala Mall's loyalty app, and it's so handy. It's like having a concierge uh, at your fingertips. You can download this app through Google Play, uh, the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. So what we did here was to uh, build in a store information guide so you can easily check which stores are open in your favorite mall for a quick and purposeful visit. There's a reservation facility here. So when you look up a store, the, the number is there and you can call that number through Zing and make a reservation. There's a unique navigation system. So imagine wazing your way around the mall. So you can do that. It gives you the direction. The P2P bus schedule is also posted here. So it's very useful for commuters. 
There's an e-gift marketplace in Zing. So uh, you, can, uh, you can buy gift vouchers from the merchants that are there and you can consume this voucher, spend it on yourself or give it as a gift. So if you give it as a gift, may matatanggap na SMS or, or email yung recipient and you can use that already. Um, once the cinemas are up and running, once we're allowed to operate, you can buy movie tickets through Zing, pay for your parking fees, and we'll add more features uh, into the future. So today you can shop in Zalora through Zing. So you can go to Zing and there's a microsite of Zalora there. We also partnered with the personal shopper service called Maikuya and logistics companies for DeliveryZ. And we strengthened our curated digital lifestyle platform um, it's called, this is called pashal.tv and pashal.ph that feature our merchant offerings. Okay, so four and five, very quickly, I'm not going to expound too much on this, but uh, within the organization, we wanted to make sure that we're all aligned in our thinking and our action, that objectives, deliverables, and completion timelines are clear, and that we're flexible when scenarios change. So we prepared a transition roadmap as a framework for our execution. And this roadmap continues to evolve, no? Uh, as we know, things are very fluid. We also make sure that we speak in one voice as we communicate our advisories to our merchants as well as sharing information uh, with the media. As early as April, we prepared a GCQ operating handbook that we made available and ex easily accessible online to guide our operations teams and our merchants. Um, on the fifth priority to be able to carry out these plans, we have to make sure that our employees continue to be productive uh, engaged and connected. So we have employees working from home, uh, same as other businesses, no? and, and we have employees who stay on site. So especially our engineers and members of the operations teams who have to look after the malls 24 seven. So we monitor daily task accomplishments. We implement a rescue team setup. This means that if there's any member of the team whose health is compromised, we will replace the entire team, send them home, disinfect the premises and bring in a new team to make sure that operations and services remain interrupted while taking care of everyone's health. We've rolled out our e-learning platforms, achieving 3,600 training hours as of today, and we set directions and report to the organization to our town halls. And also very importantly, we check on everyone's mental health. Just very grateful that we have a committed team uh, in, in Ayala Malls. Um, to wrap things up, uh, Commerce has been around since the beginning of civilization. For as long as humans have existed, we bartered, we sold, we exchanged, and we consumed resources in a collective and recreational manner. How we purchased uh, these resources, these goods, have evolved uh, over time and came in different formats. They say that e-commerce started about 50 years ago in the early 70s with teleshopping. And with the advent of the internet in 1991, online shopping became possible. E so commerce flourished and survived pandemics that occurred and reoccurred over the centuries. In fact, they say that the great uh, influenza pandemic, also known as the Spanish flu, was even deadlier than World War I, with about 50 million deaths worldwide. So why is this important? Uh, so today we may be stalled by COVID-19, but let's think about how we shift gears so we can survive and eventually thrive uh, in the new normal. So there's a common thread in the response of malls across Asia in operating under these pandemic times. Um, common would be uh, four items, social distancing and safety precautions uh, being enforced. Operating hours have been shortened. Occupancy has been restricted. And there is a significant shift to digital in many aspects uh, of operations and consumption as physical mobility is impaired. So we see the same thread weaving in our industry here in the country. Uh, in Ayala Malls, we're shifting gears by considering three important drivers. Uh, the first one is uh, adaptation. We have to adapt and consider the new consumer. Who's the new consumer? The new consumer is literally more at home, more conscious about health and safety, more careful about his budget, seeking, seeks more value for his money. And the Filipino consumer of today is getting more and more digitally literate not just by choice, but of course, by force of circumstance. Which brings me to our second point here. Uh, we have to be able to reimagine and transform the way we do things. And we look at digital platforms as enablers to building the business, especially during this time. Hence, we have pursued and continue to pursue our digital initiatives. Add to this is our intent to evolve into a cashless mall for better safety, security, and convenience, and the reconfiguration of our physical spaces to be more relevant to the needs of today. 
The third point here is the new retailer. So we look at the new retailer as we consider the new consumer in a more digitally connected world. Where we can assist, uh, traditional businesses will have to innovate for better e-commerce adoption. And we welcome and support enterprising individuals and small groups that have created viable businesses out of opportunities that have emerged today, whether inside the mall or our virtual marketplace enabled by Zing, Drive-By, Deliver EC, and Pashal. So forging ahead, this would be my last slide. We believe that the malls will continue to be a vital and relevant marketplace with digital enabling click and mortar uh, operations in tune with new consumer behavior. Over the short term, we know it will be an uphill battle as scientists um, hurry to discover a vaccine, hopefully soon, as businesses explore all means to stay afloat, and as we rebuild customer trust and persuade shoppers to enter the mall while minding safety. So today we focus on digging in, uh, being creative and resourceful and efficient uh, in our use of resources, and really just doing our best uh, to you know, to stay afloat and be ahead of the times. So with that, um, hopefully we can be as adaptable as the gecko that you see here, you know, over the short term, we try to uh, survive uh, and uh, evolve. Uh, and the next step really is working on stabilizing the business so we can once again thrive. And it's a collective effort. So we have to keep the Bayanian spirit alive. But that's all we have to share for now from Ayala Mall. So thank you for listening. And please remember to always wear your mask, wash your hands, and keep your distance when you visit us. So stay safe. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. You so much. Ganda. Partner, are you so back? Make it up. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry for that glitch, partner. Thank you so Hi. much to Miss Yang. A very, of course, as always, no, Ayala, Land, Ayala Malls is always responsive, very compassionate, and uh, very excited, Taya, partner, because it's data back what she presented. Uh -oh. and, and you know, partner, I, I will agree, huh? and I can attest to the fact that Ayala Mall was first to announce that support to the, to the, you know, to the lessees. You know why? Because she guested in my show on a Saturday <laughs> and, and the public notice came on a Monday because it was uh, Secretary Mon Lopez who was ahead of her and she responded right away and said that there will be some reprieve in, in the rental at, uh, on a Saturday when it was officially announced on a Monday. It happened yes. in my show. I should know. Right, Miss Chiang? Thank you so much yeah, for that. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. Yeah, it and was a painful why, decision, but it's the right thing to do. Yeah, but yes. because at, at that Sunday, it became a headliner in all papers and they picked it up from, from your announcement in my show. Thank you so much. But partner, our let pleasure. me... I think she mentioned something very important that we not only apply to malls, but to all of us. On the short term, we have to survive and evolve. And in the medium term, we have to stabilize and thrive. And she yes. mentioned about the Bayalihan spirit being alive. Thank you for that. That's not only applicable to malls, that's applicable to all of us. Let's survive and evolve. You know why? Because what does not kill us will make us strong, partner, that's right? right. That's yes. right. Foresight, as always. All right. So thank you for that. And let's proceed right away to our next panelist. By the way, those who are watching us from Facebook, there are, there are some connectivity errors, you know, a glitch happening as well. Uh, but rest assured that this video is being recorded live here in Zoom. You're lucky to be here in Zoom. Those who have friends in Facebook, please advise them to register right here in Zoom because here at least we can have a lot of backups. But with the connection with Facebook, we got disconnected for a while. But rest assured that uh, what you missed from the talk of Ms. Yang will be uh, posted again in uh, PFA Facebook. Thank you. Yes, partner. I'm very excited to introduce our first panelist this afternoon. And thank you to David Salon for uh, uh, the generosity of uh, sharing to us the David Salon products. We need that partner eh, to maintain mm. the glow you know, while Tama. we are working. Okay. It is my pleasure to introduce our first panelist was born in Sutherland in Time and Wear, England, and was exposed to hairdressing at a very early age. He came from a family of hairdressers, one of the most sought after careers in England. After three years of study, he passed with distinction the City and Guilds of London <laughs> Institute examination in men's and ladies hairdressing. After seeing a need for a salon that would offer high quality hairdressing at a customer friendly price, he established David Salon Incorporated 
with the desire to share his expertise to more Filipinos, he opened the very first David Salon in New, in, uh, New Farmers Market in Cubao, Quezon City. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm round of applause to the founder and CEO of David Salon, Mr. David Charlton. Good afternoon, David. Good, Good afternoon, David. everybody. Thank you very much for inviting me here today. I think we to carry straight on. I think we have a small video, a short video, sorry, to show you first. Um, are we ready for the video, Dr. Carl? Are we? All right. All right. Just like I knew I would Try to look my best, there's only one place I go They keep me smiling from my head to my toe At David's Salon At David's Salon At David's Salon They bring out the best in me At David's Salon Thank you very much for that. Uh, I'm sorry we couldn't have a better looking model, but you know it was all on short notice, so we had to take the best we could get, which was which was me, of course, <laughs> and I work for free. So um, I hope you all appreciated that. I uh, wanted to show you that video just so that you would know that it is very, very safe to go into the salons. You know, we obviously were in a very difficult time at the moment. Um, not to repeat too much to what Miss Yang has said, but. Um, what we want is for people to feel safe going out into the into the shops again, and of course, definitely to our salons. And I think, as you can see from that video, uh, our staff have all of the PPE that you could wish for. Um, I think that you're very safe there. We disinfect regularly, and we make sure that everything is sanitized properly. And uh, you know, you should feel very, very safe coming into the salons. You know, as it said there, um, this is. Uh, you know, a new beginning for us. I don't want to call it the new normal because I would hate to think that this is normal, but it's certainly a new beginning for us. And I, I, I think like a lot of people, we're rethinking how we do things. But let's be honest, you know, a haircut is a haircut, you know. So but what we can improve on that is the service that goes around it. And this is what we want to try and do with our, our clients coming into the salons that to assure them that they can safely come into the salon without any health worries or scares. Everything is going to be clean and sanitized, as I said, and they can have a, still have a good service. You know, you can still come in and still have a great haircut. You can have colors now. You can have treatments now. Of course, we follow the guidelines from the government. Um, so we're not doing nails yet, but hopefully within the next week or so that will be allowed. I, I don't see why it shouldn't be allowed, but Hopefully it will be allowed and, um, and then we can work and, uh, and, and, and give full service to our clients and safely as well, of course. And again, as Miss Yang was saying, when we, we are in Ayala Malls also and uh, we're very grateful to the malls for, for the way that they've, they've helped us as a business. And uh, we're very grateful to our regular customers that are still coming in and have still wanted to make appointments and still trying to come and see us. Um, I sh should add that we do have to open up. We have to, we're surviving at the moment, but if we want to thrive, then we, we, we do have to open up completely, I think. And let, you know, let our, let our customers be careful as well. Obviously businesses are very careful. We care about our customers and we care about our employees also. You know, I mean, we, we're very, very, um, strict with our employees, hygiene and, and safety standards. And to be very honest, I think nowadays, everybody is very careful. Our employees wouldn't want to come to work if we didn't have all of the, the sanitation tools necessary. So I think everybody is very conscious of this now. So we just want to enforce to our customers that it's really safe to come into salons. Rather than calling up your favorite hairdresser and saying, can you come to my house and do it? 
that, if I may say, is not safe at all, neither for the client nor for the staff member, because the client doesn't know where the staff member has been or what PPE they're wearing, and the staff member doesn't know what the environment is going to be like going into their client's house. So I definitely would not recommend home service to anybody. You're really much safer going into the salon where you can see that everything is professionally uh, done and everything is professionally cleansed. So, you know, I, I, I think what we have to do is, is just continue giving the best service we can. It is difficult for our staff. I know that it is uncomfortable for them. But what we want to do is when a client walks in the door, we make sure that they're safe and healthy. And then after that, we still give them the best haircut that we can. We make sure that the colors and the products that we give them and use on them are all correct. We make sure that they have a style that they want. And that when they go out, they leave feeling much better. You know, they leave feeling as if they've had a treat. Well, they should leave feeling as if they've had a treat. But I think in today's world, anybody that uh, leaves any establishment feeling happy that they've been there, I think it's uh, it's a nice outing now since we since we can't make la quoche like we used to you know <laughs> I think anything that we can do for our customers to make them feel happy is it's something that we strive to do so at the moment we survive um, we're trying to thrive and and hopefully as things open up as soon as possible then we will thrive we will be cautious um, but we'll also be able to look after everybody better with higher turnover of both clients and of course finances. Once we can get back to that, then we can all we can all start and, um, and and try and do things better in the future. As I said, for us, it's a new beginning. It's a way to look as to how we actually do the hairdressing business. It, it, it's a fairly simple business, but once you start and get into the details, you know we can start and I think improve in with things that we did and how we can do things in the future. So that's, that's our goal as well, survive at the moment. And then hopefully within the next few weeks, may I, may I say, we can open up properly and we can really start and get going, get all of our staff back to work. I feel very sorry for our employees as, as everybody's employees, you know, they're, they're working half, you know, half of the time and or 30% of the time. And, you know, no one, and survive on 30% occupancy of 30% of their salary for very long. So I think I'm really looking forward to once we get back to full employment, full capacity, then we can start and rethink how we do things with our employees for the future. And of course, make sure that we still give the best hairdressing that you can get anywhere. So we have also been doing sort of um, digital selling a little bit. We've, we've actually done more of that recently than we ever did before, of course, because clients would come into the salon. You can see just behind me, we have a, our uh, retail products. Uh, we've been doing quite a bit of digital selling as well now. Um, not enough to make uh, a big difference as compared to what we had before, but I think it's important as a, as a business person and as a business to still keep your name out there, even with the retail while we weren't um, making a, any money out of it at all, to be very honest, I looked at it more as advertising because people could still see that we were advertising David's salon products. We were still advertising David's salon. So um, with the digital side, of course, we will still continue that online selling. Um, and we, we, we will tie up various um, organizations to do this. That we have tied up with them. And continue with this. Uh, I looked at it more as advertising rather than a, a big business stream, although it, uh, it certainly it certainly did help a little bit. So that's worth doing. But you know, hairdressing is a person-to-person -person, uh, type of business, so we, we we can't stray too far from that. However, you know, Zoom meetings. We, we you know we've got students that we've been doing Zoom classes for as well in our academy. Um, and, you know, uh, the, the, our teachers are here in our training centre. People log in to Zoom like this, of course, and then they do demonstrations, students watch. So even with our academy and training, we've been doing that on Zoom as well. So we have been trying to uh, embrace the digital, <laughs> digital world as much as possible. 
and what does I say? I'm a hairdresser and I'm used to dealing with our clients face to face. So it's, uh, it's always been a bit of a struggle for me, but our younger hairdressers think it's great. So, so between us, we work things out. And, and I think that's the same with any business now. You, you do what you can and how you can do it. But the important thing is to keep your name out there. And the important thing is to keep doing what you know is the best for both your customers and for your uh, employees. And of course, for our landlords as well. We all want to stay where we are and we all want to keep going, no matter how difficult it is. So we just keep doing our best and plugging away going forward. And I think that's the important thing. One step forward at a time, doing the best that you can. And hopefully within a short while, we'll all be back to... uh, the old normal that I loved so much and, uh, and we'll be able to carry on from there, but hopefully very soon. So I think uh, the best advice I can give to people is try new things, do what you think is right for both your employees and your customers. And I think you can't go wrong. And then we just keep pushing forward and doing the best that we can. So good luck to everybody. And thank you very much again for inviting me here today. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Thank you. A very assuring, uh, you know, very assuring experience you're sharing with us that we really have to keep it safe, do what you can, and uh, do what you think is right, take one step at a time. And of course, partner, as we say, if you, ste- uh, if you keep just moving forward, no matter how small the steps are, it will bring you somewhere. And thank you for emphasizing the caution and the need for survival. And keep your name out there. Partner, maganda yun, no? Tama, keep your yes. name out there. And uh, David and I and our next uh, panelist also has something in common. And that is we put our name out there. Like my review center, it's Carl Balita Review Center. David's David Salon. And now we have Isa. All right? And yes. uh, there's something, there's a very assuring message whenever we use that, uh, our name. Because our name becomes our guarantee. All right, partner, let's move on and introduce the next speaker, please. Yes, thank you, David, for that. Our next panelist uh, is actually the Assistant General Manager of the Business Development Unit for Kumon Philippines Incorporated. He oversees the support operations of the company from public relations, IT and logistics to finance and human relations. He has been in the company for almost 20 years and has been part of the company's growth in enrollment from 15,000 in 2002 to over 80,000 enrollees in 2019. Friends, let's hear it from Mr. Juan Primitivo de Guzman. Good afternoon, JP. Hi, good afternoon, She. Good afternoon, Carl. Uh, thank you so much, David, for that great presentation. And as you can see, I have been one of those suffering from a lack of a good uh, hairstylist. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to cut my hair in the last few months. Uh, yeah, and uh, as I start, I'd also like to acknowledge Yang. Uh, thank you so much. We do have some Kumon centers in the Ayala malls, uh, as well as some other malls as well. And it's really a great um, help to them and to us that uh, you've given them this consideration about the rents. So um, I prepared just a very short um, presentation, and I hope to hear more from you in, your, in the Q&A. So let me get into it. All right. So while we're waiting, okay. Okay. Now, part, yeah. Part, yeah. now we have it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, Kumon is known for our uh, math and reading learning centers, uh, where we offer our, uh, of course, after school programs in face to face sessions. And uh, and uh, uh, so, many, so many people are surprised, but we're still very traditional. We use pencil and paper. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, it was a big, uh, this, this last few months have been a big uh, change for us. Uh, you know, earlier this year, just in February, we conducted our free trial and uh, it was a week free trial and it was a big success. No, we had, um, after the promotion, we had thousands of uh, children coming to enroll for March. 
but then of course, uh, as you know, then COVID happened and uh, we had to suspend classes uh, first, of course, NCR, then Luzon, and then uh, one by one uh, nationwide. Um, and so that's that. So what can you do? Uh, but uh, I'm happy to tell you that uh, as of June 2020, our enrollment is back to 49% of that of 2019. Um, so uh, I guess I won't, uh, I, wouldn't, I won't pr pretend to not have been uh, nervous in the last few months, <laughs> but let's just focus on uh, how did we do it? Uh, well, uh, we leveraged heavily on digital. Um, which was something very new to us. As I mentioned previously, our method is really very traditional with pencil and paper. And, uh, and we also uh, leveraged on the very ubiquitous and very uh, common and uh, people are very comfortable using now using the motorcycle and bicycle and even tricycle delivery services. So uh, what we do now is that of course, aside from the student, uh, for someone to study Kumon, they would need the Kumon worksheets and, of course, their Kumon instructor. And, of course, that used to all just happen in the Kumon Center. But now we have arrangements where worksheets can be delivered to the residents of the student or the parents, now that it's GCQ and people can go get out more, uh, parents can pick up the worksheets from the center. And then now, of course, construction, uh, instruction and consultation with the parents can be done via video calling. Now, so, uh, in the past, we used to say, well, uh, Kumon is a daily study. No? Uh, children should, will study every day, but two days in the center and five days at home. But now it's all seven days at home, but uh, the instructor still does her instruction and consultation on the scheduled days. Uh, now, in, now in GCQ, uh, and uh, we can have the, uh, as I said, since people can get out of their homes more, uh, people can pick up the worksheets from the center, but of course uh, we're also looking, we also have to prepare in case some areas will go back to MECQ or, or even maybe something stricter than that. And so that's why we have the delivery uh, of worksheets as well. Uh, we also now have a uh, app, uh, which uh, we have very creatively called our My Kumon app. Uh, and uh, so that even if the worksheets can't be delivered, the worksheets can actually be accessed online. So the kids, the students can continue their study. And again, the instruction and cons consultation will continue uh, via video calling apps. So of course, um, the government has already declared that uh, uh, schools will start this August, and uh, as I'm sure you well know, in the last few weeks and months, everyone has been talking about what will the different modalities be? Will it all be online instruction? Will it all be, they have this term called blended learning, hybrid learning, asynchronous learning, and all of that. No? And uh, well, I, uh, all I can say is that uh, with the current situation, uh, the education provider who can deliver good results without needing a classroom setup, and, but also addressing the need for safety, social distancing. And also, of course, now we have to, of course, face the reality as well that the parents have their own work schedules and the kids will have their school schedules as well. So if you can address all of that, uh, then your service will be in high demand. And that's what we're trying to do here at Kumon. Uh, even our franchise application process uh, is uh, continuing. Uh, we haven't stopped on that. Um, it's a bit funny, but we actually had uh, one batch of franchisees complete their training process uh, last April. No? So everything went on Zoom and uh, the instruction, uh, the review of the materials, the actual um, hands-on experience of instructing students and observing students, it all went on Zoom and normally we would do that live. And um, I'm happy to say that uh, we're starting another batch of uh, franchise trainees uh, this July. Uh, I think it's already started, but uh, we're continuously conducting our franchise orientations again online. So uh, while we, while I too, just like David, I long for the old normal, I guess we have no choice but to accept this new normal and keep going. So, 
Thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, really a pleasure to be here and I'm really glad to listen to everyone and learn so much from all of you. So I'm looking forward to the rest of the presentations and the discussion later. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, PJ. Yeah, you know, I have some questions for you because I belong to the same industry. Yes, partner. I'm actually <laughs> excited to ask questions because my children are all on online learning now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Siguro partners, the q and uh, we can discuss also. I, I also have questions for you. And yeah. <laughs> uh, because we have a lot of uh, questions already aside from the Q&A through the Viber. So let's move on to our third panelist for now. Our third speaker is known for her work in building brands that celebrate a holistic approach. She made ISA a familiar brand for quality aesthetic and wellness services and products. Our speaker took marketing, business, and management studies at the De La Salle University and the University of Asia and Pacific. To keep herself abreast on the latest technology and innovations in aesthetics, she frequently attends seminars and conventions here and abroad. She is currently the President and Director of Operations of ISA Skincare Corporation and the Director of Health Wellness Lifestyle Incorporated, the maker of Glutamax, Glutamax Men, Nice Day Coffee, and Anagen. Without further ado, let us all welcome the very beautiful Miss Sheila Hernandez Nasal. Good afternoon, Sheila. Good afternoon. A beautiful afternoon to Cheryl and to Carl, to um, David. Well, my co-panelist. I'm a client, a happy client of my co-panelist. Yang, we are a, a tenant at your Ayala branch in Ayala Mall in Bacolod. PJ, my kids all took Kumon. And of course, David, I go to your branch and podium to have my nails done. Anyway, I would also like to greet um, uh, the members of PFA and our viewers. Uh, I would like to thank PFA for inviting me to share some practical insights and experiences that ESA Skin Care Corporation went through in order to redesign the service experience in our clinics. For the past 34 years, we have dedicated our time and effort to understanding the various needs and accommodating each of our clients' unique preferences when it comes to achieving their aesthetic and beauty goals. In order to address the growing needs of our clients, ESA has now evolved from being ESA skin and body experts to ESA aesthetics and wellness, a partner in transforming your beauty routine into a self-care journey towards holistic wellness. Last March, when the government announced the lockdown, we were all taken aback by the sudden closure of our clinics. After the initial shock, we had to quickly pull ourselves together and think of ways to redesign our service to conform to the new normal. I gave my staff a term that would remind them of the changes that we need to implement moving forward. This term is SKIN, or S-K-I-N. S stands for security and safety. We value the health and safety of our clients and staff. Thus, we implemented strict safety measures such as for the staff to determine that they are healthy and fit to work, we require them to take a bath um, before the clinic opens because our clinics are equipped with, with shower areas. Um, and the wearing of PPEs properly. For the clients, upon entry, they would have to fill up a health check form, contactless temperature scanning, sanitizing of their shoes, hands, and personal belongings. We also require pre-booking and encourage cashless transactions. For the clinic, the sanitizing of floors and surfaces every hour or more often if necessary alcohol dispensers are available in several areas of the clinic. And the use of UV cabinets, lamps and wands to sanitize rooms, beds, and equipment. We even went as far as installing UV for the toilets or the water closets. The next letter is K, which stands for keep frugal or for lack of a better term, kuripot. 
I've taught my girls to be very conscientious in their um, requests and spending because finance, finances right now are tight. I've also encouraged them to fully utilize resources that we have on hand. For now, our workforce is still skeletal, which means some of our staff still do not receive their, the same amount of compensation they used to. In order to alleviate their financial concerns, ESA has launched the YPP, or ESA Product Partner Program. In this program, our STAs, or skincare advisors, will have the opportunity to earn income by selling our products and receiving commission from their sales. The next letter is I, for innovate. We've strengthened our presence in, our dig in the digital world. During the ECQ, it was our online ordering and delivery of products that kept us afloat. Upon analyzing the data that we gathered from our online sales, we realized that there is a demand for our products and that there is considerable opportunity to improve sales using this platform. Another way of reconnecting with our clients during the lockdown is the, launch, the launching of our virtual consultation with our doctors. Also, we have launched an online store called Cosmela. Um, together with our partners, we, have, we can deliver our products such as ISA, Glutamax, Glutamax Men, Anagen, Nice Day Coffee, and soon vouchers for use in the clinics on this website. And of course, there's, a, of course, there's um, the use of social media platforms to update and communicate with our clients. Now to help our clients maintain their beauty regimen at home, we also launched our beauty at home line, which consists of beauty kits, gadgets, like the pearl lifting iron, and the clear reveal wand, which are safe to use at home. The next letter is N, which stands for new normal. It is about time we realize, accept, and embrace this new normal. As of the moment, I cannot um, claim that we have perfected our protocols, but slowly, with hard work, constant communication, and regular updates, we will adapt, thrive, and succeed in our endeavor. Always remember that there is opportunity in adversity. Adversity allows us the opportunity to find out what we are capable of, to develop our strengths, and to access aspects of ourselves that are, and our businesses that we did not know existed. That's it for me. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you no, so much, Isa. Um, yeah, she, last uh, night, this morning, uh, partner, I used this. Eh. She sent this to me. And sabi ko nga, this is specific. Wala ka nito. Dito kita natalo, no? I don't oh, know what... what. Kaya kayo glowing ni Rich today. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and I... The soap, no? And uh, thank you for that, Isa. I'm, I'm curious about that, ano, yung, yung little gadget that you showed earlier. You know, because many, really many vain men and women now are looking for some home remedies. I mean, beauty at home. That's, that's how Isa called it. And adopt, thrive, and succeed. And thank you for saying that adversity becomes the mother of opportunities. And uh, that's it. So, partner, we have heard it from our three panelists and, of course, from our main discussant, uh, Ms. Yang. And uh, huh, so the skin principle is well taken uh, into consideration. Safety, co-report, innovative, and the new normal that we need to embrace. All right. You have a list of questions already, partner. I, I never run out of questions. That's my job yes. for 20 years in ABS-CBN. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, ikaw, ikaw, sabi mo you have a question for me regarding... Yes, first muna. Oh, para kasi excited, ko. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm. excited din akong uh, malaman. Mm. Uh, you know, especially the parents who, whose uh, children are on online learning. Imagine yeah. before, after classes, your kids are sent to Kumon or to mm. review centers, di ba? Mm. But now they're 24 7 here mm -hmm. and uh, sharing of time, resources, gadgets, and all. How are you coping, partner, with the CBRC? Well, the, the thing is, uh, even before the COVID, uh, we had already been online for the past, uh, this is our 10th, 13th year. And uh, since our 10th year, I think uh, I'll look back a, a decade ago, we already had our, our online uh, platform for the delivery of our content. 
because you know we have we have students from all over the world like uh, Filipinos who will take the board exam in Saudi in the Middle East I mean, uh, other parts of the Middle East even in Europe and even in the US so that forced us into going online that's why the day after the lockdown we already had an, our online no physical contact review we call it NPCR but you know it's still sad because iba pa rin kasi yung face to face and uh, the, uh, it's the discomfort of the market. Eh. I think uh, PJ will agree with me. The market became a little uncomfortable with the online platform of learning. They actually waited. Uh, initially, they were trying to wait for the normalization in a month or two. But until they realized that there was no chance but to go and embrace the new modes of delivery, uh, that's, when, that's when they came in. In, in. As far as I'm concerned, they reduced the sales, they reduced the profit. Kasi nga, hindi comfortable yung market, pero nag-expand yung number of offerings namin. Believe it or not, now I'm offering programs that we never offered before. Like we now have architecture review, you know, we have um, a review for rad, rad tech, for medicine, later on even for bar, and we even have college admission test reviews now. And these are things we, I never touched before, but because of the opportunity offered by the, the virtual learning, also. wala na akong limitation partner. Yes. And in fact, in fact, even what I do as, as a coach, as a mentor of business, is now part of my mainstream Carl Balita Review Center offering. And even these kinds of uh, platform, itong uh, pagmamanage ng mga virtual learning. Dati ang pinupuno ko Philippine Arena, ngayon ang pinupuno ko Zoom. Diba? And then we migrated into servicing those agencies or those companies who need expertise of uh, our center in, uh, in delivering the virtual learning. We're doing good. It's just that the market needs a little time to really migrate into virtual learning. But my fear is this. My fear is after this, we get so used to this, uh, I don't think uh, the reviewers will still go back to the classroom. We are learning something that might persist and might continue even if the future would allow us to be back in the classroom. Nasanay na kami sa virtual so even even the market masasanay na doon kaya nga sabi ko ang labanan ngayon nandoon sa virtual space. All right, thank you. Ko, thank you. Hindi ko makakalimutan yung sinabi mo that there it's not just about the lessons eh, but also hmm. the peer learning that yeah. the students are missing. So I don't think it's you know going to be uh, very very different from what we used to have because they they search for that interaction, diba? The socialization, the social animals yes. in us would like to uh, have, have that experience in the classroom. That is something that will not be replaced. That's why the, so the socialization now will have to be strengthened at home. And that's why I'm building, a, we call it learning community. So it's a learning community. And now we're doing the omnimodal. You know, when you say omnimodal, all avenues. We have printed, we have video, we have website-based, we have podcasts. We have e-books. And by the way, my faculty, hindi ko sila masweldohan ng tama like before, kagaya ng before. Now, they're creating books. And I have launched like five books already since the lockdown. And wow. these are really opportunities if, if you just want to you know, exploit the time that we have together with the family, the time to be at home, to study, to learn, to improve the brand. I think kung hindi man tayo kumita ngayon, ang mahalaga ma-achieve natin ngayon is the branding. Alright? So, okay. okay. Let yeah. me... Let me throw my first question to Ms. Yang. And of course, we would like to encourage everyone to please key in your question in the Q&A button or Q&A box in, 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 any, in the gadget that you're using. Avoid using the chat room because the chat room is not where you put your questions. I have several questions already in the Q&A, but please do so. If you're in Facebook, please just type on your question in, in a message and uh, we will try to answer those questions for you. I have my first question for Ms. Yang. Ms. Yang? Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you have, have, I'm sure you're looking into evidences and data. Do you have some data on how your tenants are now doing uh, in terms of the, the, you know, the current shift into some 50% capacity and so on? Yeah. How yeah. are they doing, number one? And number two is still data. Uh, do you have some comparative analysis of the percentage of the food traffic that we're having right now as compared with what was before? Okay, so two questions. One would be tenants, so, uh, how they're doing. So let me talk about categories, uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say uh, in terms of sales, no? who's doing well on sales? We, of course, essentials is very obvious. 
um, we have our specialty shops. So these are the vitamin shops uh, doing very well today, hardware uh, stores. Uh, electronics doing well. I think there was a point where nagkaubusan ng laptop because of virtual learning. Yeah. So, so basically, basically mga health uh, oriented stores then and then basic apparel is also doing well. Um, sporting goods stores. Uh, so may mga bumibili ng mga uh, sports equipment. So these are the categories that are doing well. Milk tea. Uh, I, I think they're making a killing right now. So we see a lot. <laughs> Then, uh, delivery. Now, to your question about foot traffic. So, so two things. No, let's we look at merchant occupancy, and it's increasing across the system. We're at, on average, nationwide, we're at about 63, 65 percent in terms of merchant occupancy. So, umaakyat. So, maganda yung trend. Pero yung foot traffic, uh, gradually increasing, but not at pace with with merchant occupancy. And this is what we need to be able to improve on. So, with that. Uh, by foot traffic, I mean about 25% versus pre-COVID. So in some malls, it can be higher, as high as 45%. In some malls, it's lower. So we're at about the 25% level, 20 to 25% level right now. And then uh, in terms of foot traffic or sales during the week, we see uh, sales moving up on a Saturday and Sunday. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So yun yung galaw ng mga tao, yung mga pupunta sa mall. Um, mm -hmm. So did I answer your question? Was it a long answer? Uh, yeah, so go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Please. So, so, so that's, on, that's, on, that's on for traffic. So occupancy, we see merchants, uh, more stores opening, but we also see stores closing. No? May mga merchants that are streamlining their operations. Uh, if you want to stop the bleeding, you have to do that as a business owner, especially if you have several branches within the mall. You want to be as efficient as possible. Um, so we're seeing that, but we're happy that it's moving up. But again, I, I, I said this in my last slide, it will continue to be an uphill battle. Uh, a lot of merchants mm -hmm. are struggling. So foot traffic, why is it not so high? Because we have the age restriction. So 21 and below, hindi pinapayagan ng government, hindi pwede mm -hmm. yung elderly pumasok. Um, and then public transportation, uh, hindi pa open, lahat ng modes of uh, transport. And yung pinaka-importante dyan, takot pa yung mga tao. Yeah. So that's why it's very, very important that we uh, enforce our health and safety uh, protocols very strictly. Yeah. Are, are you like uh, very strict? There is a question here about uh, the, the tenants, the merchants actually complying with uh, some interior requirements uh, responsive to the protocols yeah. of the government. Is that something you, you make sure and you ensure? Because, you know, I'm asking this yeah. question not only for the interest of those yeah. who are entering the mall, but... For the general public who might just have that paranoid, you know, the, this is what Dr. Love of uh, National University of Singapore called paranoid economy. Like, mm -hmm. like in, in your case at Ayala Mall, are you very strict at making sure that every merchant is uh, giving yes. full compliance? We, we try to be as strict as we can. So the government guidelines are there so that uh, kami, a small operator, uh, complies with that uh, guideline, with the guidelines, and the merchants themselves have to comply with these guidelines. And we keep on emphasizing that because umiikot uh, ang, ang DTI at ang LGU, no? very, very strict also. And mm -hmm. it's also our responsibility to make sure that, hey, is everyone compliant? So we, we do our rounds. Now, if you're, the question is, do you know, can you assure us 100% that everyone is complying? That's going to be a very difficult question to ask. So I would rely on our merchants to follow and our mm. operations, operations teams uh, to inspect. So as much as we can, we try to be uh, very strict about enforcing all of these protocols. Ayaw natin mahanapan tayo ng reason para masaran. Masara. And it's not just for Ayala Malls, it's for the entire mall industry. So we try to be a, a role model to each other. Yeah, of course, because it's their loss if they get identified as the source yeah. of the transmission. And that's not yes, going yeah. to be affecting only the mall. Yeah. It will affect right. even the brand, no? Right. I would know of some banks. I would know of some banks, for example, whose staff became positive and, uh, you know, they, they would not even dare announce it because, you know, it will cause more fear to the other uh, patrons of the bank. Yeah, you were saying something, Ms. Yang? Yeah, I'm, I just want to say that we're also very happy that a lot of merchants, uh, if, if not all of them, are, are compliant. So, mm. yung, yung, yung takot na mahawaan, yeah. so kailangan, mm. kailangan ayos lahat. 
So we're very happy towards that end in terms of the compliance to health and safety uh, guidelines. Yeah, I'm sure you're monitoring the global, uh, no, the global practice, uh, Ms. Yang. Yes, yes. Uh, and like, like Thailand now is back to like 100% and Vietnam and parts of Singapore. Yes. Is that something you, you would see happening soon? And how, what's your comment uh, on how they're doing it, for example, in the malls like in Thailand that are 100% open now? And uh, are you see that happening soon in the Philippines based on your observation? That's a very tricky question, Dr. Carl. Yeah. Um, <laughs> with respect to the malls, uh, I think in terms of the protocols, uh, we're there. Uh, we're benchmarking on global practices and we're also trying to improve, let's say, mm -hmm. on the digital front, uh, how to do contact tracing and then making sure that when you enter, uh, you know, you're able to to log to log into the HDFs uh, that QR code. Not as sophisticated. Uh, the country is not as sophisticated as probably other Asian countries, where uh, you know when you enter, mm -hmm. you have your mobile phone, and and they can trace you everywhere. Yeah. And, uh, the government is mm -hmm. doing something towards that end. So within the the realm of the malls, we try to make sure that everyone is safe. Now we have a bigger community uh, where where we're at, no, and there are a lot more factors mm -hmm. that need to be considered for us to be uh, moving at par with other countries. A lot of things more to do. And by the way, yes. we'd like to acknowledge the members of the press who are here with us today. If you have some questions, you would know how to PM us, please. Uh, send us your your questions. We have some members of the press already in the panel. I mean, in, in the audience. Yeah. Um, yes. I have a follow-up like, like, question, partner, yes, for Ms. Yang. Partner. Because yeah. we were discussing mm -hmm. last time about the redesigning the new customer experience and also we had uh, Architect Palafox dis uh, discussing about the uh, open layouts, you know, more open spaces. And we know th that uh, Ayala Malls has been a front line for all of these um, developments of all these interventions. So it, might, it may have been... Um, easier for them to adapt to the new normal because of that um, yeah. interventions. But my question is, right now, with because we are focused now on the retail sector and the service sector, and uh, we wanted to know if there are complementing services or complementary services that uh, Ayala malls are providing their tenants. Because others don't want to go to the malls right now, but of course, the stores are open, the retail stores are open. To service their clients. Yeah. So, so Cheryl. Uh, so, thanks for that question uh, and and for that remark about open space. And that's that has been our trademark. Uh, Greenbelt. I think we have all told about three hectares of open space there. You go to Manila Bay. That's one hectare. And and we're we're very grateful that we actually moved uh, not moved towards this end, but it's really part of our design because now it allows us to to address uh, the the situation. So on the merchant side, that's exactly why we rolled out those digital initiatives so because we thought uh, if we cannot bring the mall to the customer uh, uh, if we cannot bring the customer to the mall how do we bring the mall to the customer and what help can we provide uh, to our merchants so we can connect them and that's why we thought of uh, drive-by so nakakatawa yung drive-by uh, initially we had a lot of food merchants participating and then after that we have the non-food we had people buying toys people buying uh, pet grooming supplies, you'd be surprised, like an 11,000 tra single transaction. We have uh, people buying books, no? uh, I think about, I'm not sure, 80,000 uh, at one point uh, for one transaction. So that's one way of aiding the merchants. Uh, and also because people sometimes, takot sila, ayaw pumasok, pero gustong mag-drive or gustong dumaan lang. So the digital initiatives, Zing is there, so to connect our merchants and customers as well. And we continue to work on Zing. So hopefully with Zing, we are able to help generate sales, provide a broader marketplace for uh, a broader reach for our merchants. Some of them, or many of them, have their individual websites. So we, we also link up to those websites, so you have a bigger uh, marketplace. With respect to the physical configuration of our spaces, what we're doing now, because 30%, 50%, dining capacity, even 75%, so kung maliit yung inline space, pag hinati mo yan, konti lang din ang pwedeng pumunta. So what we did uh, was to extend the seating capacity. So we put up uh, tables uh, in the activity centers and in, an, in, our, and in our open uh, areas, uh, open spaces, especially for perimeter merchants where there's a much easier opportunity to uh, expand the seating capacity. So some of the things that we've been doing uh, to help out our merchants. So 
So it worked for your advantage, in fact, no? Uh, I think yes. of all the malls, you're the one known for the open spaces. And yes. actually, when uh, Architect Palafox mentioned uh, that partner, partner last time, yes. I thought of you and actually, I think you, your malls for it. All right. So thank you for those answers. I'll have more questions. Uh, by the way, before that, uh, Ms. Ms. Sheng, uh, this is uh, from Ed yeah. Paras because he owns the... Uh, Paras Alter Station, and maybe you know I, I knew you mentioned this earlier, but you can have longer time to explain this. How much rental concession did you give, and when will this uh, concession take effect? Uh, just just to reinforce it, Ms. Xiang. Uh, th thank you for that question. Um, as of end of May, uh, I don't know. Is this, is this the question? The nominal value uh, in terms yes. of in terms of rent support, uh, that's about four billion. Uh, end of May. That's the total rent condemnation. And as we continue mm. to support our merchants, we continue to provide the rental support that I, I showed Kanina, that we're just on percentage mm. rent. That number mm. will, will continue to increase in terms of rent support. So we're also trying to find ways on how to cushion uh, the impact of the rent condemnation. So that's about $4 billion by end of May. As, at end of May. What was the second question? I'm so sorry. Uh, when did it start? Uh, uh, so I mean, when, did, when did it start? Uh, yeah. ECQ, uh, even before the formal announcement that malls will uh, shut down, as, as you've mentioned a while ago, Dr. Carl, um, mm. we, we said, okay, we know that the malls uh, will be closed. So we have to give our merchants, uh, number one, time to fix their stuff. So we had to announce that, I think more than a day, bef uh, a day before the closure, probably two days before the closure. And then second, the so we, we decided quickly on the rent condemnation. We said it was, mm -hmm. it's going to be painful, but it's the right thing to do. So no business, then that's not charge rent. So that started on March 16. Uh, all the way up to MECQ, even up to today for merchants na hindi pa pinapayagang mag-operate. Now the rent support, uh, that's the variable rent and then the discounts, uh, we're looking at uh, the first wave would be up to end of August and then we will review and, and recalibrate as we observe the sales performance per category. Yeah. So that's, the, that's, that's the answer. All right. She has a very detailed Thank presentation very partner earlier. So, Ed, if you can uh, watch again yeah. after this session, mm -hmm. it's posted at the Philippine Franchise Association page. You can screenshot because Ms. Yang yeah. has a very detailed presentation earlier. Yes, uh, indeed. For that. Uh, I, I'd like to go to uh, David. David, you know, um, first, there is a crisis that would render a lot of people in financial I mean, with financial challenges. No. Number two, I think people now are learning the family haircut, the color, the treatments, etc. You know, like I, I remember my wife will cut the hair of my, of, my, of my daughter and so on. Even the treatments now are happening home and considering that some, you know, um, formulas are now available online. How do you expect that to affect the, the salon industry or the, the, that, part of your business in general? Well, I mean, you've always been able to do your own color at home and things like that, you know, treatments at home and everything. But I think that comes back mm. to what I was saying earlier about going into the salon is a treat. You know, everybody, mm, can, right. everybody can cook Sinigang at home, but everybody has their favorite restaurant mm. to go and eat Sinigang in, I'm sure. You know, so it's, it's mm. the, I think that going to the salon, if, if you do it yourself at home, you're just doing it to take out your gray hair and that's it but if you go to the salon mm -hmm. not only do you get your gray hair looked after properly and you have a nice haircut but the whole experience should be nice as well it should be a relaxing experience relaxing shampoo the, the blow dry should be nice so the whole experience should be nice and personal so you can, instead of having to worry yourself at home you know the, the professionals mm -hmm. look after it for you so yes it will uh, you know it, i think it will have an effect in the very in the short term but mm -hmm. i think once we open up fully and things do get back to normal i think people will soon um as uh, pj was saying earlier about uh, and you were saying earlier about you know pe uh, people being social animals mm -hmm. i think people will want to go out and, and and have their have their luxury experiences outside rather than just in the house you know we've all yeah. got tvs but we still all like to go to the movies when we can. Mm. You no, know, so I, I I think it's just people will get used. To it. it will affect us if well, obviously it's affecting us a lot now. But, mm. Um, I think it will infect us a little bit in the beginning. But 
I'm hoping that very quickly people will get, uh, you know, will want to come back out again. And all right. you know, we're all tired of being locked up, I think. And David, I'm sure you're very familiar with the uh, government protocols uh, governing salons, restaurants, and so on. Specific to salon, uh, do you consider that the government protocols, uh, I mean, um, be, being issued to businesses now are sufficient to really address the safeguards of uh, the transmission? Uh, to be very honest, I think mm -hmm. that we're more than 100% um, safe. Uh, I think um, if you, you know, if you look around the rest of the world and you mm. and you look at what doctors and everything are actually saying, and, mm. and if you see how things are spread, even in Europe uh, and the, where, where countries are now pretty much open, um, they don't have the same heavy duty protocols that we have. So I think, right. and and to be honest, I, I you know I think Philippines is. is the nation has always been ultra conservative and ultra safe, you know. So uh -huh. I, I think that what we do is more than enough. We we definitely follow what the government says, and and I think most businesses, including, um, for example, uh, as as, as the, the our panelists were saying earlier, mm. um, UV lights, things like that, they're not uh, mandatory by, by the government. They're not mandated by the government. Sorry, but we always in that little bit extra. I'm including David Salon in that as well. We always mm -hmm. go that little bit further to ensure the health of our, of our customers and our staff. So I, I, I think what the government is, is requiring now is more than enough, much more than enough, because mm -hmm. I know for a fact that um, as, as, as Sheila was saying and, and Yang was saying, PJ was saying earlier, we always go that little step further ourselves without anybody telling us look after look after our customers so yes I, I, I noticed there was a question if I may answer now um, earlier about somebody was saying if they had diabetes or if they're a little bit older and infirm did we have a separate area in the salon for them may I mm. answer that now go, go ahead go ahead please um, well we don't have separate areas per se but because we're down to only you know 50% or 30% occupancy 50% I think we are now um, the salons are spacious. <laughs> so mm. if somebody comes in and lets us know and say, look, <clears throat> I've got diabetes, or I'm at risk, then we can always find another corner really well away from everyone else to, um, to, to look after them. And to be honest, even before, uh, we had a lot of clients that had cancer. And of course, they're very, um, when they're having their chemo treatments, they're very uh, careful um, we have to be very careful with them. So we, we're used to dealing with um, older clients and clients that are, that are a little bit infirm. Um, so, so when they come in, the staff are very uh, empathetic towards them. And we do, put them, you know, we, we, we can always separate uh, another chair to the side. We can not put people beside them. So we're always, we've always been very health conscious in the salon. Uh, that's, yeah. you know, that's how our business is. It's to make people feel better and to look good. So um, yeah. we, we, we've always been very solicitous to people that uh, have been a little bit infirm. So somebody asked the question about if you were diabetic, do we have a separate area? No, we don't have a specific separate area. But if you were to come in the salon and let someone know that you were, yeah. uh, that you were diabetic, for example. You have to be transparent towards yeah, yeah. as a customer. Yeah, yeah. If, if they told us that, then yes, of course, we can create a separate area for you. We can always position chairs to the side, make sure no one is around you. And of course, be extra careful with our sanitation and hygiene and everything. Yeah. So, just know, yes, Thank we you. could certainly yeah. accommodate that. I could imagine, partner, the headache of the health mm -hmm. and wellness service sector right now. You know, yeah. those operating uh, their, their clinics, the spa, mm -hmm. the salons. Because uh, you have to have the cost, the high cost of... Uh, protocol implementation and then you have to open on a 30% 50% operation that's a huge headache and uh, that's partner correct. but but we, partner yeah wait but wait it is very assuring uh, i asked that question because i know that david is uh, in touch with the global standards in salon and it's very assuring that uh, he said that if only the salon owners will follow the government protocols uh, i uh, he thinks that it's more than and sufficient enough 
to actually prevent uh, the transmission and to keep the business going. Thank you for that. I think from an expert like David, it's very assuring. But partner, if, if you may allow me, just la one more question for David. Sure. Uh, be because we have a lot of uh, viewers now who might want to get into salon business um, or, or maybe franchise uh, a salon business. David, is this the best, is, is this a good time for it? And, and uh, if, if somebody would come to you and say, I want to franchise David Salon, uh, how would you respond to it? Uh, well, I would say, do you have a good location? Because mm -hmm. we all know location, location, location. But mm -hmm. if they have a good location, we would um, obviously have to tell them that uh, during this, this current time when we have to be careful, um, mm -hmm. we could certainly start and do uh, some of their training. Mm -hmm. I think... Um, one of your guys earlier was talking about, uh, you, you know, doing a franchise training in Zoom. Um, but we could certainly talk to them and walk them through all of the instructions online. Um, and now that uh, we, we can travel a bit more, we could certainly go and visit the site. So I would tell them that, yes, we could start and talk about it now. But mm. I wouldn't really rush them to open up. Certainly, I would say... If, they, if, if there is a Christmas rush, try and open up just before Christmas. Um, <laughs> if not, certainly try and don't rush it. Go a little bit slow, uh, a All little right. bit slower than I would normally. Normally, it would take about three months to open up, three to four months. I would suggest now maybe three to six months. Thank <laughs> you. Yes, we can do it. Let's go slow. Thank you that very much. That question actually is applicable also to Sheila Docarl. I know, I know. That's yes. why I ask. And partner, you know, mm -hmm. Sheila and you uh, belong to the same industry because aside from the service that uh, um, she's offering in terms of facial and skin treatments, uh, it, it, she also has products to sell Correct. to the market. I also have a very Retail. important question to you later, no? Regarding the, you know, these are essential somehow, you know, beauty and... Uh, Vanity will always be part of the essentials. Eh? And I, um, but before that, that's going to be the last. No? But maybe ask PJ first so that we can have a transition. PJ? Yes. Uh, PJ, my, my question is this. Because, you know, uh, in my case, for example, many of the teachers that I had, I had are now, I mean, even the private schools and um, in the country have... Uh, let their teachers free. And that made a lot of tutors available in the free market of the, of the Facebook and of the digital space. H how do you see us, including myself, competing uh, with these teachers who can offer their services for free and kumare, kumpare situation in the neighborhood? And uh, uh, these teachers are not only driven by their expertise, but driven by their need to also earn somehow. How are you dealing with this? How are, uh, do you see this affecting Kumon? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a very good point, no, Carl. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, if you look on Facebook, or I think we've even seen some on Shopee, uh, yeah, everyone is offering, well, so many sites, pages, persons are offering that, oh, this is, you know, like Kumon, or this is better than Kumon. Mm -hmm. So I guess you just have to um, somehow take it with a grain of salt that they consider you the gold standard. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so maybe one aspect of course is that uh, it all depends on the brand that you've built over the years okay uh, because of course uh, anyone can offer any kind of service but what's the customer's assurance no and especially with an education type uh, service uh, you're not just uh, at risk if you're the parent you're not just at risk of uh, losing a little bit of money no? if you get the wrong yeah. service or you get someone who turns out to not really be effective but uh, it's the it's the child's time no, and I think that's uh, what parents were really uh, very, uh, what's the word, no? nangangate over the summer break, that they yeah. would have their kids do their uh, enrichment activities. Uh, mm -hmm. The school year was cut short. This school year mm -hmm. will start a bit later than we like. No? So uh, there's really, a, I, I believe that there's really, a, we really believe that there's a demand for um, educational services now. And yeah. so if you've, in the past years, if you've uh, developed trust with the market, if you've uh, developed a good brand name for yourself, then I think that uh, you can weather the storm a bit better. Uh, if That's I good. can just um, add on to what David mentioned earlier about um, uh, the salons and especially the David salons uh, taking uh, the PPE and hygiene measures seriously, I would say that it's the same for Kumon as well. Although again, um, 
no one is actually, there are no children coming to our centers now no, since it's not yet allowed. But I think any big business, any name brand that has really um, taken the pains to build its, it build its brand and build its name over the years uh, would really take the PPE and hygiene and all of these social distancing seriously because, uh, you know, if there's even just one case, then everyone would know, oh, your brand name is now painted. No, it's uh, yeah. not unlike, uh, very, uh, quite unlike maybe if any other neighborhood store or neighborhood business. Even if you say that, oh, you know, in XYZ Learning Center, there was the case. No. Uh, so, yeah, uh, even though we don't have students yet coming to the centers, uh, even before the Hello. ECQ happened, we really had guidelines like, uh, if there will be a case, you know, it'll be 14 day quarantine, the center has to close, things like that. Uh, we were sending our franchisees the big bottles of alcohol and hand wash so that they could do the hand washing, hand sanitizing. And uh, that's what we are getting ready to do as well once uh, government allows the kids to go out of the houses again. Uh, I can see you, but I can't hear you. Is that yeah, me? Thank you, PJ, uh, for that. And um, that's very interesting, especially for parents. Um, if I may ask, because some, actually, some parents expect that online learning should be like, you know, on, on a discounted rate or discounted fees. Why parents should not expect that? Because, you know, some some say it's harder now for the for the uh, educators in in migrating uh, learning. Yeah, um, that's a very fair question. No? Uh, because uh, I think online shopping has been associated with a lot of discounts, a lot of promos. So it's really quite fair that people would feel that. But um, I think that what we just have, uh, what parents just have to consider is that um, all of these schools or learning centers and even uh, us, um, the franchisees, and we are now having to invest a lot now on gadgets, which we never used to need before, uh, internet connections, which again was not needed before. So there are a lot of additional costs as well. And so uh, in some cases, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a struggle to just maintain the current fees. No? But definitely I can, all, I can also sympathize with those parents because maybe their benchmark is also that uh, if my kids are not going to the school, then obviously we don't need to be paying for all of the, let's say, cafeteria. Electricity, yes. And yeah, there are a lot of those miscellaneous fees sometimes you know, with schools. So yes, uh, certainly parents should be looking at the fees and uh, should be evaluating. Um, and uh, if I may add, uh, one hidden cost that uh, really became quickly apparent you know, with the online model is that with some of the little kids, of course, they can't really operate the device or if uh, ma disconnect yung internet, parang they're not the ones uh, capable to reconnect the internet for their gadgets. So to some degree, depending, I guess, on the age of the student, age, the age of the learner, they might need some support from their parents as well, which of course is an is a, uh, investment or it's, an, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a cost. Uh, however, what I would like to reassure parents of is that what we have seen is that the parents who have been spending more time in whether it's because out of necessity to help their kids with uh, the gadgets, operating the gadget, make sure the camera is pointed the right way, make sure the screen is displaying the right thing. Sure. They actually appreciate the service more as well because they see, they see it right in front of their eyes. No, it's not just that they get a report card at the end of the quarter or something to say this is the grade, but they can actually see how our instructor was instructing the, their child from start to finish and that maybe they'll see that at the start, ah, ganito pa lang yung nagagawa ng anak ko. But by the end, wow, uh, she can do the addition by herself or she can do the operation by herself or uh, she knows the uh, strokes for the proper writing of letters uh, and things like that. No? Uh, exactly. And one other thing is that um, I guess since the parents aren't having to battle traffic so much anymore, no? uh, our days, <laughs> we have a few more extra hours in our lives as well. Um, the parents are easy to talk to now. Uh, one of our biggest challenges in the past was finding time for parent-teacher uh, conferences. And now it's really easy to give feedback. And I think that has really uh, increased the satisfaction in a lot of um, 
encounters between parents and the teachers. So exactly. uh, you, we just have to look at the bright side no? and, uh, uh, and uh, go from there. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, yes, thank partner. You. And so, I'm back. <laughs> yes, mo yeah. moving moving to the retail, the service, and the retail sector sector because we have David here and Sheila who are both mm. in the service but also have retail operations. And as we've mentioned early on during our first uh, sessions, partner, di ba yung ko nga? There's this lipstick effect in the economy mm -hmm. during crisis. So. At first, everybody was just after the essentials. As what Ms. Yang was mentioning earlier, there was, you know, a lot of purchases for unexpected goods, mm -hmm. like um, really not essentials, but because people now have more time at home, they, they see mm -hmm. what, uh, what they can do more. And so yeah. for the retail products of uh, David Salon and Isa's, uh, Isa's Skincare, the Glutamax and, and everything, uh, and Orais pa. Uh, yes, and Orais pa, partner. The, oh, oh, yes. <laughs> no, but so, correct, correction, partner, ayoko na nung lipstick economy. Kasi uh, okay. bihira na din naglilipstick ngayon kasi naka-masks. It's more of the eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> Oo nga, eyebrow, <laughs> the eyebrow economy. economy. Okay. The eyebrow economy. Tama. Yeah, your kami, question, please. Go ahead. Yes, kami kasi, so if I may share na initially, no, um, Right, right after the the announcement of the lockdown, so we closed all our, our our operations, retail operations, and the manufacturing for like you know three weeks. But because we also manufacture essentials like sanitizers, washes, soaps, we had to mm -hmm. reopen right away in April to service uh, institutional clients for the manufacturing uh, operations. Namin. But for the retail, we had to migrate right away online because as we've been mentioning earlier your brand presence should you should uh, be very careful about that that's why you have to you know make your uh, name out there put your name out there so with david and sheila did you find a surge of uh, sales for your uh, retail or your products online i go first yes of course sheila Yes, we did. Um, actually, um, sometime this year, I think early this year, I'm, I'm talking about the clinics. After the Taal, the Taal event, we already felt, especially for our clinics at the South, we felt, um, we felt a uh, difference in sales. There weren't too much um, for traffic. Some of the malls had to close because of the Taal thing. Anyway, so at that point, we were we were already preparing for um, a scenario. Of course, not this serious, but something like this. So as early as January, we were already um, thinking about online um, being available online. We've already partnered with delivery services. So when this um, pandemic, when the lockdown started, we were somehow ready for it somehow but of course um sales is um very different um very very different from the usual because most of our sales come from services but of course i'm happy that we were the the delivery of the products kept us afloat yeah. now for the fmcg which are glutamax glutamax men and gen were available at Lazada and, um, and Shopee. And we are considered essentials. So we did see a spike in sales for those products. Correct. Yeah, because soaps, washes, and body care is part of the essentials sector partner. Eh? So and the Serenity products partner. You know why? Because we're so mm -hmm. stressed. You know, in Serenity <laughs> products. <laughs> Ultimate Fika Sent Oil daw ngayon. Partner. Actually, <laughs> Ultimo yung mga, yung mga binibenta ngayon, it's, it's in peaking daw in sales. What about Orise pa? Did you notice some, some movements in the sales? What, what did you notice in terms of sales? Well, because also our marketing team uh, all migrated online, actually, mas uh, longer yung aming uh, uh, reporting time, yung duty time ng sales team namin because they're working from home until now. 
uh, the entire sales team are working from home. So there, you know, more more time for getting orders. So aside from the platforms that we've been using, we already also have our own in-house. And uh, mm. yes, the increase in sales are actually higher on the online market. But of course, the brick and mortar stores and the other, you know, channels, the omni channels, cannot be replaced. And you know, mm. right now, so we still need. We still need to uh, cope with that. But uh, our production kasi partner, we have over time na because, you know, like uh, Sheila was saying earlier, we have a skeleton crew also because there's no public transportation mm. until right now. So you have to make do of uh, the human resource that you have. But uh, so some of them are doing overtime because we have, you know, gallons of sanitizers and the other essentials that need to be serviced for institutional. So that's what's happening to us right now. But, mm. we're, you know, the good thing with all the panelists is that survival mode, nya, eh, you know, the, the uh -huh. sinasabi ni Ms. Yen kanina, short term. So right now, our focus is short term and then go to go to uh, resiliency to be able to navigate how we go to the medium term goals that we need to to battle with yeah survive and evolve on the short term and stabilize and thrive in the medium term that's from miss Chiang. and uh all right what about the david david your your experience in terms of the sales of your of your retail um well a, a bit like sheila we uh we actually started um, last year selling uh, selling online, and we when we set up our own uh, Facebook page, and of course we've got, we've had our own web page for years. We've also been doing a lot of um, in the, over the last two or three years. We've been selling through Metro deals and Metro deal and, and groups like that. Um, but we concentrated really on selling vouchers that people would bring into the salon, so it was more. It was more uh, more for hair services rather than product. But then, of course, um, then we started to push pro products a little bit more towards the end of last year. Um, and then early this year, we were uh, we, we we did a deal with uh, a company to um, help us sell our products online through our own web page and through our own Facebook page. And then again, as Sheila said, then the lockdown started. So what before was um, just a sort of something that we were doing just to, to get things moving and to get things rolling and to, and to get people used to seeing our products, uh, all of a sudden it became more of a priority. So then we pushed a little bit more. We brought the staff in on it as well. Uh, the staff um, would get uh, clients. And this is pretty much all through Facebook initially and our own web page. Yeah. Um, and, and, and now, of course, we're trying to push more and more. But it was, it kept our, again, as Shell was saying, it kept our skeletal crew busy. But it's not, um, it definitely doesn't take place, sorry, it certainly doesn't take place with our, uh, with our salons and our, and our existing physical stores. It, 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 our, our sales are just not the same in any, any shape, size or form. Yeah. As I was saying earlier, it is good for us to, to start and push the online thing a little bit. Yeah. We were into it. We've just, you know, obviously, it's become more of a priority now. All right. What, uh, PJ, I have some questions because you're now sending your uh, worksheets online and printable at home. Uh, that, that would have some IP concerns, intellectual property concerns, uh, that would have some chances of that being, you know, just sent to other people? How do you address that? And number two, uh, are you intending to also come up with books to replace those worksheets that are loosely given to your, to your duty? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, you're right, Carl. No? Um, it was really a kind of a sensitive uh, subject uh, on how to talk to the parents that please don't post this on Facebook. Please don't mm. post the, uh, the pages of the worksheets on Facebook and things like that. But or forward it to the cousins, forward it to the cousins, <laughs> yes. or, right. or maybe one, you know, all my four kids uh, enrolled uh, had, had Kumon classes as well. So. Oh, thank you so much. And all of them are products of Kumon. And, you know, I would imagine that if it happens now, maybe one will enroll and the rest of the three would just, you know, use the same materials anyway, just photocopy it. So how do you, how do you manage that? 
Yeah, uh, well, we just talked to the parents to please ask them uh, nicely not to do it. Uh, and we explained mm-hmm. that, of course, it's a, and I think that the parents who have enrolled their kids in the program can really tell you that it's, of course, mm-hmm. not just the materials, but it's the combination of the materials and how the instructor will really observe their child as they interact with the material and then tailor fit their instruction or the, the, the interventions that they do using the materials. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, definitely if a parent, uh, even with our um, paper worksheets, it it was the case Mm -hmm. that we can't stop a parent if they then give that, give the used worksheets to the child. Now we've heard of that before. Uh, But I think they themselves found that it's really not the same thing if you don't have the observation of the instructor Mm -hmm. and the intervention by the instructor. Now we really take pride in how uh, our instructors, they really have uh, what we call a keen eye not to see the situation of the kids and uh, uh-huh. they can really kind of put themselves in the situation of the kids and say bakit yun yung sagot niya bakit yun yung sinulat niya and then, ah ganito and then provide just the right kind of uh, instruction or intervention so yeah because learning is the learning is derived from the experience and let me assure the parents uh, uh, watching this now i mean i'm putting my my doctor as, uh, of education here uh, you know, there are some competencies that can be learned better in the virtual space. Of course, others may not be delivered well, uh, socialization, etc. But there are so many other competencies that can be learned by the children if they are in the virtual space that the traditional classroom cannot teach, actually. Yeah, so rest assured that there are advantages as well as much as there are disadvantages that you're afraid of. So let's look into the advantages. I, I have some questions for, uh, for Sheila. Sheila, there's a wide practice now of telemedicine in, in medicine, in, in the practice of medicine. Uh, how are you using it in your, in your clinics? Um, like the we, online consultation, etc. Yes, the virtual consultation. We started um, April. That was April okay. um, when we got in touch, coordinated with some of our clients put out on mm. social media and uh, the other platforms that we are available for for yeah. consultation. Yeah, just like when when like if you will consult my my skin, then I just have to come closer to Zoom and then you see my pores and say use this. Something like that, right? Yeah, I think it's something <laughs> yeah. that can still be done. Well right? most of the things were allergies actually. Most say that again, the, please. Most of the cases were allergies. Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay. Allergy. So, well, we gave them some products that were available in Mercury and some products that were available in the clinic. So, it also helped us boost sales. Yeah. I'd like to ask this partner to David because, you know, David is uh, probably the only person who can answer this question in this panel. David, what do you think are the qualities of the Filipinos that will make us survive this COVID? Um. <laughs> Question. Of course, you're, you're the best person from a very objective point of view. What, did, what do you see in the Filipinos that would make us win this, win this war? I think um, patience, uh, stoicism, just willing to get on with things. And, you know, I've, I've seen my staff, the way that wear the PPEs, and I've seen uh, my staff here in the office, our training center staff, and everybody is cheerful doing what they have to do with under very, very difficult circumstances. I mean, I, I never envisaged this in, in, in any hairdressing business ever, you know. And, um, and of course, none of us have seen this before. But I've seen people react so well and so, I won't necessarily say cheerfully, in some circumstances cheerfully, but so accepting of what they have to do. I was staffing the salons with the PPE. They just, you know, they smile, they send little pictures and things like this of, <laughs> with all their PPE and everything. And I'm just, yeah. I could not do what they do. I'm just so full of admiration for them. I, I, I think it's fantastic. And they work very hard. Everybody wants to come to work, but obviously they can't at the moment. Um, and, 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 and everybody needs to work as well. And, mm. and, and I think that... Uh, or people here just just whatever whatever is put in their way, they just work a way around it or they work their way over the top. And we keep taking small steps forward. But I think just the patience and, and, and the willingness and hard work 
uh, the average Filipino is just fantastic. And, I, and, and, and I'm completely impressed with our staff. Once we start to make some money again, I'm going to throw a big party for all of them. I think they've been doing fantastically well under very difficult circumstances. And I've got to say, for very little compensation as well. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I think, I, I, I think um, you guys are working really well with this. Thank you so much, thank David. You. Coming from you, that's, that's a lot. And thank you for some feedbacks we're getting, like from Dean Iro, Salvador Dancel, who is saying thank you for the insightful learning. PFA, you have the best. You're the best for the, for the Kapihan. You thank are you. the best for Kapihan. Sabi nilang ganun. Thanks for sharing. And we're getting a lot of appreciation from, from all over, from everyone. Salamat po. We're doing it for you, ladies and gentlemen. Alam nyo, pwede naman kami magkwentuhan on our own. But we want to do it so that, you know, pwede naman kayo magtawagan ni Shea or mag-group uh, chat kami. But, you know, we really want to to have this so that we can be part of your learning, can be part of your navigation yes. of this crisis. Yes, partner. The positivity partner of the Filipinos, it's July, but we're all looking forward to Christmas na. Mas na pa, yeah. na pa no? <laughs> Correct. Oh. All looking forward to the Christmas celebration. So and yes, partner. partner, I'd like to thank I'd like to thank really uh, the moving force behind this uh, ikapihan, uh, of course Chris. Chris is really the the brain behind this. And but you know I really would have to tell you, partner, you're the president of PFA. Dapat maganda yung reward mo sa secretary of course our executive uh, director, Ma'am Chit. Grabe, they are very uh, efficient, you know, excellent team. And yes. uh, by the way, for those businesses who are businessmen who are looking for some most reliable information about government policies, uh, guidelines, etc., don't be afraid to visit the PFA Facebook. You have it there with perfect evidence and links to the primary sources. Alam mo partner, nagusak pa mini mischeat before, just to say it publicly. Uh, the danger kasi of quoting anybody is just that you may lose your credibility along the way. And that's why it was my suggestion, sabi ko, PFA is doing it so well, but please put the evidence, the reference, and so on. And they followed it, they do it so well. And I think the most reliable source of uh, accumulated, synthesized, and curated information related to government guidelines, updates, and so on is the PFA. I'll put my credibility on it. You're doing it such a great, great job. Ms. Chief and the Secretariat. Thank, Thank you for, you for that. Thank you for that, Doc Carl. Actually, Rich, I and the Secretariat, we're community, communicating every day. So hmm. aside from you know, the regular board uh, consultations, the chat groups, and the meetings, so uh -huh. you know, we're 24-7 uh, since ECQ. And uh, you mentioned uh, the infographics that we've been doing to reach out to not just the members, but to the entrepreneurs in general. And we have a lot of uh, researches done, and we will mm -hmm. be uh, announcing it uh, later. Ayo kung ipreempt, we'll be uh, oh, sharing it to public yeah. soonest. Okay, yeah. Because the questions, okay, na tayo. I think uh, pondo na tayo. We, we have done it. We have done it so well. And by the way, I'd like to make an announcement, partner, if I may. Uh, the Quezon City go Local Government has this uh, stimulus package for businesses based in Quezon City. So in case you're interested, please uh, message us in the Facebook of uh, the PCCI, Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Quezon City. Uh, all businesses based in Quezon right. City, including franchise owners. We have the stimulus package as much as 400,000 just for you to keep your employees. So calling all QC. Okay, mag-message kayo here. Maybe I can consolidate and ask the Secretariat. Kasi Monday na ang deadline. Baka hindi pa nila nababalitaan yon, Including your branches, partner na nasa Quezon City uh, uh, registry. Including those in the malls. If you are registered business in Quezon City, we have something for you. The LGU. Take care of Mayor Joy Belmont. Alright? Yes, partner? Anything else? Yes, I think ah. we, we need to uh, ask our panelists and our speaker for the closing statement. So maybe okay. siguro tayo. May we call on Ms. Sheila for the closing statement. Um, first of all, I would like to thank um, you, Cheryl, Carl, and the other members of the PFA for inviting me. Uh, I would like to leave you with um, words that I've already mentioned a while ago, but for you to 
to actually appreciate what's happening because um, let's always remember that in adversity, there is always an opportunity. So our challenge is to find that opportunity. Um, stay you. safe, everyone, and God bless us all. Thank you very much. And partner, gusto ko lang banggitin to. This might really make you feel so good. Sabi ng isang architect, si Architect Ong, this is my portal for understanding how clients in the industry think. Thank you very much. Nako talaga, no? Thank you, too. And uh, uh, shout out to all the architects. I was their keynote speaker partner in the oath taking of Area A, uh, uh, United Architects of the Philippines last Sunday. A special shout out to uh, the new vice president, my good friend Alfred Carandang, the maker of Mahalta Resorts in Mindoro. All right, let's call on PJ, please, for uh, come on. Your final shots, please. Um, yeah, well, um, I guess I'd just like to say that uh, Kumon is really trying to be a good partner to parents uh, in uh, looking for ways that to educate your kids in not only effective ways, but also in safe ways. Uh, but at the same time, we are also uh, very cognizant of our responsibility to our franchisees and our partners, and we're trying to be a good business partner to them as well. And I guess I would just like to reassure the uh, all of the entrepreneurs out there that Kumon and education is still a good business opportunity moving forward uh, because um, definitely education of our kids is the future for our nation. So Very good. Yeah. Um, finally, I'd just like to say that uh, once again, thanks to Miss Yang and Ayala Malls and the other, the other malls as well and uh, a lot of landowner, uh, landlords have really extended uh, uh, rent concessions to our franchisees and so we thank them. Uh, talagang ramdam yung bayanihan spirit, no? Uh, walang iwanan. So I think this is really how we all get through this uh, by uh, helping each other and uh, working together. Yeah, amen to that, PJ. And I'd like to emphasize this to the parents that you know, you don't prepare the road for them, you prepare your children for the road. And education really is the means okay. to it. Prepare yeah, them for the road, don't prepare the road for them. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, maybe have David, please. Uh, well, well, just to say thank you very much again for inviting me. Um, uh, it's 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 certainly been um, interesting, and and it's it, and it's nice to see other people having the same sort of ideas and know that we're not uh, we're not in this boat alone. We're we're, we're all going in the same direction. Um, you know, we 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 all have common ideas and common thoughts uh, for our staff and for the our, our franchisees and for our customers and people that we work with. The only thing I could say is. We have to be brave. We have to start and go out. We have to pass this message to people. We have to, we have to get the economy moving. We've got to take care of ourselves, of course. And anything that we do, anything that we do, we must make sure that we're all safe, especially for our customers and our clients. So again, thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate it. And uh, Cheryl for being the host. Uh, Carl for being the host. Also, my co-panelists. Thank you so much, everybody, and everybody that's been listening to us or watching us. Uh, thank you so much for joining. And the last thing I can say is, Kapit Lang. Say that again, please. Kapit Lang. Lang. Did, you, <laughs> did you say that? Yeah. Coming I did from... say Kapit Lang. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, and David. And David, David, thank you for the kind words you have expressed on the qualities of the Filipinos that would make us really uh, survive this war against the invisible. And by the way, special... Um, I'd like to repeat, those who are businesses in Quezon City, uh, please go to the Facebook page of uh, PCCI, Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Quezon City. It's very active there, message, so that you can get uh, more information about the stimulus package of uh, the local government of Quezon City for all the businesses, uh, micro down, I mean, um, medium and down in Quezon City. Thank you very much. And partner, please do the honor of calling our main discussant for her final words. Yes, of course. Um, parting shots from Miss Yang of Ayala Malls. Yeah, thank you, Cheryl and Carl. So once again, congratulations and thank you to the PFA uh, for inviting us here today and to my fellow panelists. Uh, I learned a lot from this very insightful session. So thank you for choosing to locate in Ayala Malls. Um, let's look to the future with guarded optimism, uh, gratitude and grit. I like uh, what David said, not to be bold uh, and to cap it lang. Let's continue to evolve and look at the opportunities that will allow us to survive today and let's survive together. 
So with that, we'll continue to do our best in the Yellow Malls to keep everyone safe and to be supportive to our merchants. So thank you and keep safe, everyone. Okay, thank you very much. Hashtag kapit lang. Yeah. <laughs> That's our hashtag for, for today. Yes. Partner, yeah, thank you so much really for, for having me here in the Ikapihan. You know, in the past, I did not have much time for the Philippine Franchise Association, one of the organizations I respect, not only for itself, but for the people behind it and around it and, uh, and within it and for which uh, it exists. Uh, you have my high respect and thank you for this opportunity. You know, in the past, I got so many invitations to be part of your engagements, but this time, I'm glad that I have the time and I'm, I'm, I learned a lot myself. And the two-hour, three-hour webinar we do once a month or used to be every two weeks is something that also, go, you know, helped me navigate this experience. And uh, looking back, uh, maybe five years 10 years from now, we look back to this moment and say, we've done it and we've done it for those people whom I have shown you earlier. If I may show you again for the celebration of the PFA, look at what we have reached, including, excluding the ninth Ika Piha, no? 169,000 people benefiting from what we did. Congratulations and thank you so much, partner, for this opportunity. Yes. Well, please accept our utmost gratefulness in behalf of the Philippine Franchise Association Board of Trustees the entire membership and the secretariat, we won't be able to do this. You won't be able to reach out to more if not uh, with all our panelists and our very generous, very gracious uh, speakers since uh, the first panel up to today. And if I may share then, partner, you know, my closing uh, statement. This week is uh, MSME week and uh, we're bleeding profusely. All the MSMEs in the country are bleeding profusely. We, um, we wanted to survive all of this. And uh, my parting shot is that instead of complaining, instead of finger pointing why the government is not doing this, why the landlords are not doing this, you know, as we are being instructed when we are in the plane, you have to put your oxygen mask first before helping others. So as we've been sharing this afternoon, help, your, help yourselves first before helping others so that we may be part of the solution instead of being part of the problem and we will be going forward, moving for forward now, partner. So with that, thank and, you so and much. And I should say, partner, I should say, yes, the Filipino Yes, can. the Filipino brand can, of course, <laughs> partner. Yes, thank Filipino you so much can. for that. Yes. Yeah. And how do they get this book? Please announce. Please, please well, they, they can get yeah. this online. They can visit uh, Orispa page on Facebook. Mas mabilis doon. Or they can uh, shoot me a private message on my public profile also on Facebook, Sherry Ramos Quintana. I think PFA also has stocks in the office. Thank you so yeah. much. Yes, of course. Thank and you for this afternoon. Bo Boast Coffee. Ang ganda ng color nun sa'yo. Sa akin yes, kulay blue. For, for uh, keeping the, the glow in us, thank you for David Salon, for uh, yeah. Sheila, for Issa Skincare, thank you so much. Thank you, PJ, and to Miss Yang. Thank you. And uh, we're very grateful. Our heart is uh, overwhelming with gratefulness yeah. to share more, partner. And watch out, watch out for the virtual conference no, of exactly. the Franchise Asia. It used to be the Franchise so Asia. Things. Yes, yeah, so many things um, to look forward to. Please always uh, follow the Philippine Franchise Association official uh, Facebook uh, Facebook page. Bigyan ko na ng, ng idea yung par, uh, ating uh, viewers today. It's five days. Only three to four hours a day, but it's full. I'll tell you, it's full. It's the best learning experience you can probably have virtually uh, in this time. From March to 9, I'll tell you, it's guaranteed to make you learn um, uh, as much as you can. And uh, that's going to happen sometime in September. Yes. All right. So picture taking though tayo. Can we have a picture taking with everyone? Photo opportunity. Chris, can you join us? Baka gusto magbigay ng final shot ng ating executive yes, director. Yes, please, Chris. Yeah, Chris. Yes. Can you? Yeah, I, I want to show Chris. Chris, salamat for this. You know, um... Yeah, kailangan makita ka sa video. Ayan. All right. This is This is Chris. Uh, hi everyone. I wasn't expecting lighting, ano, si Chris yata. Yeah. Oh. I wasn't expecting to be on, but well, I think just thank thank you to everyone. Um it, it's been a special nine um episode Ikapihan. 
really happy to have uh, shared a lot of learnings. I've, I've learned so much. Um, and actually, the learning's just con just starting. So I think for all of us, let, let's just keep on learning. Um, thank you very much. Everyone actually started to share. Um, everyone was so open about what they're doing. And I remember someone saying, if someone tells you now that they have all the answers, they're not telling you the truth. Um, none right. of us have all, have all the answers. So tulungan lang tayong lahat and, and let's learn from each other. Very nice. Yeah, and uh, can we also request Alan to be on camera so that we can have a picture? Other members of the board uh, who are here, maybe we can show up and have a picture. Miss Chit, yeah, if you want to join us in this picture taking. All right, everyone, let's have a nice picture. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Till the next uh, season of ECA yes. Pihan, I'm sure after the virtual conference of the PFA, we shall bring it back for the next level and mind you it's for PFA it must be the best yes. ha, diba, partner thank you so much this has been Dr. Carl Balita watch out for my learning community by the way I'm building a learning community follow me on Facebook if you want to be part of that learning community I limit it to a few number of people who will learn together and network together and bring this um, war forward together and for those who are interested to be managed in terms of their uh, virtual experiences, virtual learning, conferences, interactions, and even events, please message us on Facebook. Look for Carl Balita or Dr. Carl Balita and message me from there. Thank you so much, partner. Thank you so much, Dr. Carl. Thank you to everyone in behalf of the PFA Board of Trustees and membership. Uh, please accept our gratefulness. Thank you. This is Sheryl Quintana. Always believe, yes, the Filipino yes. brand can. Thank you so much. Thank you, bye -bye. everyone. Thank you and take care. Thank you, Miss Chi. Thank you. Thank you, PFA. I'm excited for September. Uh, CBRC uh, team, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, too. Thank you, PFA. Thank you very much, everyone else. Have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Luz Bakani, for saying PFA is the best virtual learning experience and I'm glad I'm part of it. Thank you for saying that. Bye-bye. Thank you, David.